Good evening. I'll call the meeting to order at this time. If you will, please rise for the invocation and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. This time, I will call on Councilman Barber to lead us in the invocation, please. Dear Lord, we're so thankful we have this opportunity that we can come. We can enact the business order of the town of Smithfield. We pray, Lord, to help us to be attentive and alert and understanding of the situations. Help us apply the best things that we can for the town of people. Lord, I pray for uh, that all the people that would be presenting tonight would be able to present in a clear way and that we can understand. And Lord, that we again make the best decisions for the town of Smithfield. For us in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Um, I did want to say that the public hearing for the Buffalo Road subdivision, um, which was previously advertised, I believe, uh, will not be heard uh, tonight uh, due to the planning board tabling that, that decision. So that will not be on uh, tonight. Um, also, uh, the manager is requesting that consent agenda item number 17B be removed from the agenda. And... Um, I would like to remove uh, consent agenda number seven, deed restriction, and number nine for the surplus property. Um, move that to, um, well actually, yeah, move those to uh, business items, both of those to business items. Um, I think we can handle that pretty quickly. So business items one and two. We'll move those to business items one and two. Yeah. Uh, yeah, number seven and number nine. Yeah. Any other changes or additions to the agenda? Not Mayor, I have some questions about number 10 on consent. Uh, very brief, but. You, would you want, you want to put that on business, under business item? Mr. Credo here tonight. He is. I can probably just talk with him after the meeting. Um, I mean, I actually had that also to remove, but then after looking at it more, I Yeah, that'll be brief. Please put that to business. Okay. So we'll add that then to business item number three. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay. Anything else? All right. I have a motion to approve the agenda as amended. So move, Mr. Mayor. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. <clears throat> All right. We move now to our presentations. Our, our first presentation is acceptance of the 2023 NC1 Water Award for the Water Distribution System of the Year. Small utility. Ted, I'll turn it over to you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, this is becoming a very delightful habit. We tend to win these things frequently. But <clears throat> the town of Smithfield enters uh, every year um, a, it's more or less a competition with other water systems uh, the similar size around the state of North Carolina. And this year we were judged to have the best, or uh, we were the winner of our category. And I'll just read very quickly. Recipients of this award will have demonstrated that they perform quality water system maintenance procedures through efficient use of labor, materials, equipment, and innovative methods to keep their distribution system in good working condition and minimize health hazards. This award honors the system personnel that serve their community with a high level of professionalism and diligent work in the operation and maintenance of their water distribution facilities. The recipient staff make the most of their available resources, no matter how great or small. So with that, Jerry. <laughs> A representative, uh, one of my, one of those guys on the staff. So with that, we'd like to award this um, distribution system, small system, Town of Smithfield for 2023 to the Town of Smithfield. All right. 
Thank you, sir. Very quickly, if that wasn't all, there's more good news. Very similarly, um, the town of Smithfield entered the same competition for sewer collection system of the year, and we were also awarded that of our category. Um, the same essential uh, wording, so I won't bore you guys with it, but essentially um, the collection system personnel serves their community with high professionalism, and the staff proves themselves to make the most of their available resources, no matter how great or small. So the North Carolina Water, or NC1 Water, um, collection system of the year for small t uh, systems goes again in 2023 to the town of Smithfield. Ted, uh, to your your entire team, uh, you can continue to rack up these awards. So, um, outstanding job, right? It's uh, um, you know keeping the electricity on and the, the water flowing and the, the uh, toilets flushing, right? That's a that's a big that's a big deal to our citizens and and to myself especially. So, uh, thank you very much. Thank sir. you. Appreciate thank it. You. All right. Again, uh, we do not have any public hearings this evening, so now we will move on to um, citizens' comments. If anyone wishing to speak during citizens' comments, if you will, please come forward. State your name and address for the record, and I'll ask you to hold your comments to three minutes, please. Good afternoon. My name is Alice Hodovic. Um, upon last city councilman board meeting, I met Mr. The new chief of police, and since then I received a letter from Mr. Scott, and this is me formally requesting again, if Mr. Frederick is here, that State Bureau also be called in. I have uh, suffered damages. I have spoke with, like he gave me, a, Mr. Steve Bilzo as well. I'm trying to schedule an appointment with him, but I have been damaged to the core. Um, I have to start injections. I'm 59 years of age. This is the end of my three comments, but this is again a formal request, and I also invited Ms. Susan Dole to come to this hearing meeting tonight. I'm trying to want somebody to explain to me why State Bureau investigation can't be called in. I am a senior citizen with rights, and they all been violated. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak during citizens' comments? Please come forward. Good evening. My name is Betty Green. I live at 103 Bella Square off of Barber Road in Smithfield. I moved here a year ago on November the 4th, 2022. I noticed soon after moving there was a water pressure problem. So I started asking questions about this with my neighbors. Some had installed booster pumps in their homes and some of the newer homes the contractor actually installed them before selling them. That's a sure sign of problems if a contractor's willing to add something they hadn't planned on adding to sell a house. Our HOA has spoken to the town leaders about this at length. In 2017, there was a capital improvement plan that included a tank on Wilson Mills Road. The following year, the plan showed a tank on the south side of town, but no tank for the Barber Road area or west side of town. In speaking with Ted Creedle last week, he said it was determined a tank would only improve the PSI a few points. We would like to see the town conduct another study, perhaps a pump station installed or a new method could be found. It, uh, with so many awards, it's clear we have a man in charge that can figure it out. <laughs> Putting booster pumps in each home is just not cost effective. The current quote from B&J Plumbing was $3,500 with only a two-year guarantee on that. And it's very noisy, takes up a lot of space, and can malfunction and flood the house. So our neighbors, my neighbors, are not happy about this option. We asked the town to take a new look at this issue. The western side of Smithville is paying the same as the rest of the town and not getting the same service. Thank you for your consideration. And I do have a petition that I'd like to hand in.
Thank you, Ms. Green, and that, that's a, actually a pretty good lead-in. Mike, do you, you want to introduce our clerk tonight? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> now, tonight we have um, Andrew Harris here. Andrew Harris is our new assistant finance director. Uh, Andrew was actually, his first day was yesterday. Um, and, and yesterday was his birthday, too, so he showed up uh, despite that. But Andrew actually worked for the town of Smithfield as a contractor, as, a, as our finance director, back uh, prior to Greg coming on. It was around 2010. 13. 13? Oh, 13. Um, and, and helped us maintain all of our books and everything. Now, to something positive, he, he, he jumped in my office yesterday and wanted to know where all of the uh, audits were, so I handed him an audit, and he goes, boy, you guys are really a lot better than you were in 13, so, <laughs> so that's a good sign. But, uh, yeah, so Andrew's a CPA, and uh, we're looking forward to him working for the town, and um, he does a great job already, so really happy to have him. Please welcome him when you get a chance. Well, thank you, Andrew, for the teamwork, right? Uh, for, for jumping in with our town clerk is on vacation, and uh, we're, uh, I guess assistant clerk uh, is, uh, is, is under the weather. So uh, thank you for stepping in to help take notes this evening, sir. You're welcome. Appreciate that. So uh, thanks for that, that teamwork. All right, anyone else for citizens' comments, please come forward and introduce yourself. Uh, name and address for the record. My name is Ed Hoy. I live at 159 Bella Square. To follow up with what Betty just said, I've been there for uh, a little bit more than five and a half years now, <clears throat> and we've received a lot of excuses. And, uh, the biggest one was when the when the two water lines were connected under Durwood Stevenson Bridge, and everything was going to be fine, and we knew that that was never going to happen. Um, we've heard people say that they only get complaints from Bella Square. But it's, this is a West Smithfield problem. Uh, I know a, a fireman in the uh, West Smithfield station who says they take their trucks down to the South Smithfield office to wash them because they have better water pressure. Uh, every time we complain, people come and they take measurements <clears throat> at our outside spigots. And the outside spigot at my house is 40 pounds, which is the least, the minimum acceptable amount. I will be very surprised if, it, if it's above 30 inside the house at the kitchen sink. We've had some houses that, that measure 28 pounds at their outside spigot. Uh, there's a fire hydrant right outside my house. Heaven forbid we'd have a fire at a house and a fire hydrant with 40 pounds of pressure would have to get water to a house 50 or 100 yards away. I hope the truck that gets there first can pump water because it's going to take a pump. The awards that were given tonight, I think, are fantastic for the town. I worked on the uh, Storm and Wastewater Advisory Committee about three years ago, and I know the work that we're doing in, in that area with the town is, is very good. Uh, but this is a problem in West Smithfield that's gone on for as long as I've been here. Like I said, that's over five and a half years. It's something that everybody's been, been aware of. Uh, I don't pretend to know what the answer is. I'm, I'm not an expert, but I know there is a solution somewhere. Somebody has a solution. I don't believe that that solution involves uh, homeowners spending thousands of dollars to put a booster on their, on their house to correct a problem that is the, is the town's problem. Uh, I thank you for your time. Thank you, sir. Anyone else wishing to speak? Please come forward this time. Okay. Not seeing anyone. We'll move on then to our consent agenda. Do I have a motion to approve the consent agenda? Mayor, before we move on, could you let Mr. Creedle speak on that topic? Because I thought I have a couple questions about that on the water pressure in West Smithfield. I mean, sure. I mean, Mr. Credo, um, I, I thought that just like the citizen said, that that water line tying it across was, was told to improve. And I also thought we bought attitude valves or altitude valves. Can we adjust those and fix that problem? <clears throat> the, water, the water line was not a pressure concern. It was a supply concern. 
because we only had one water line going across the river down by the Little Brown Jug. If anything should happen to that, we had no way of serving West Smithfield. So that, that was it. It was, it was more stability in the pressure rather than raising it. The altitude valve should certainly have had an effect. We see that it had a minimal effect. It did. It went from whatever, whatever, about five or six, seven PSI. Um, I will certainly look into uh, getting, uh, looking at further to see if we can raise it even more. Um, but yeah, I don't, I mean, no, no one wants to hear when they got bad pressure and that kind of stuff. I'll certainly Not look acceptable. At it. Yeah. Yes, sir. So, but my question is, is how come when we go to measure it, if that's the case, that we say it's fine? Well, legally, we the we residents have, are saying that you know, what I'm hearing is it's not. So, what, what, where's I don't understand. All right. So legally, the actual the lower limit's 20 psi. No one feels comfortable with that um, because that's what the fire trucks have to have to pull off. Uh, 40 psi is kind of where I think would be a preferential lower limit, mm -hmm. um, and that that's we go out and we check it every time someone calls. Uh, we send out crews and they, they get numbers above that, 45, 50, 52, whatever. And although that's not ideal, and certainly we all want more, I don't know, there's not, if I were to crank up the pressure throughout the town to elevate it, remember they're physically higher than, than the rest of the town, I'd blow the lines out at the pottery, which is what we did a few years ago, trying to assist that. So we do have to look at valving and we do have to look at modeling. And that is something that I was going to address in the spring when we have the contract come up for that again. So, but isn't there a minimum requirement for a C of, C of A for a 20, 20 PSI? 20 is PSI mm -hmm. is what is needed for the plumber. Correct. In order to say, in order for the county to sign off on it to get the certificate of occupancy, it's 20. Correct. Is that correct? Correct. So don't understand why we're having the issues, but okay. Any other questions? This one's got, I mean, any other ideas you can think of, sir? You know, let's let's make sure we bring those up to the table because yes, we hear from it. He will stop. So, yes, sir. Can yeah. I, I sure. Uh, if you if you don't mind, if you can come forward, yeah, Mr. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. That's uh, okay. Um, at 40 pounds of pressure, my outside spigot. I can't do two things in my house at the same time. I can't wash clothes and take a shower. Mm -hmm. I can't uh, wash clothes and, and do dishes in the sink without just having a trickle. Mm -hmm. um, I can't imagine trying to get by on 20 pounds of pressure. Gotcha. And like I said, that's 40 on the outside of my house. And, and the that's people that are measuring in the, in the 50s and 55s, these are people that have put boosters on there. On their on their homes, uh, so, you know, we, I just we, we can't do more than one thing. But if I if I put my sprinkler out on the, on the front yard, it comes up about six feet high. <laughs> it's embarrassing. Mm. <laughs> uh, and if and if someone flushes the toilet, it comes down like this. Right. You know, that's that's just the reality of, of where we are. Gotcha. Okay. All right. Can, Thank you. Can can I ask a question? Since I live in the neighborhood, too. Uh -huh. sure. I don't. I don't have quite that same problem. I mean, we don't have high pressure, but we have enough pressure to do what we need to do. I live over in uh, uh, on Whitley Drive, so it's a little. It's a different. It's an older section, newer. Se I mean, newer section was one of the newer ones. I mean, one of the original ones, not newer, but original sections that went in there. So it could be that we have something different. I was going to ask you if you could come check the pressure on our area and compare it to the pressure on their area to see if there's a difference. And maybe there's something. I mean, again, yeah, we all want more pressure, but I mean, I don't have a problem with. I just what I end up doing, we end up changing. <laughs> truth is, we changed. Uh, uh, we change shower heads and increase the pressure that way, and that works out pretty well because we, again, if you do the wrong water head, it's pretty poor. You don't get much going, but you can get ones that work better. But I was, I was, on a, I was not aware of the problem you guys are having over there. I would say to you, I'm the district, I'm your representative, and I would be glad to follow up on that, and they know me, and I will, I mean, I'm not, I'm not shy about it. <laughs> So I'll be glad to follow up. Please, uh, uh, you know, reach out to me. I'll be glad to meet with you guys, whatever you need to do, because, you know, if we have an issue, I want to resolve it. Um, I've lived there since 1983, and before there was a Bella Square, and I think it's a beautiful community over there, by the way, 
But, but you know, we, we need to make sure in Iowa's understanding, we were supposed to get some better pressure with all those things that didn't happen either. But, you know, um, I'll follow up for sure. Okay, but please reach out to me if things aren't going, if you know, you're going, please reach to me. Okay, no problem. That's what I'm here for. I'm here to reach for you. Okay, and I'll follow up with you. If you just check that out for me, because I am curious if there's a difference in the pressure across the district. Uh, if there is, then maybe something else we can do. Does that sound reasonable? Yes. All right, thank you, sir. Okay. All right. Um, even that, I think, consent agenda. Do I have a motion to approve the consent agenda? I make a motion to approve the consent agenda as amended. Second. A motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Okay. All right. All right. We will now move on to our business items. And the, let's make sure I get this right. So our first one uh, that we removed from the consent agenda, we added to business item number one, is uh, the deed restriction on town property. So um, <clears throat> I guess, Stephen, you're gonna talk about that a little bit and, yeah. and just kind of explain, explain what that's for and why that's needed. Sure. So. As you recall, we had the EEG grant to do the uh, Spring Branch uh, project back in what, two, sorry, 2019 or so. That project is wrapping up. Um, and then last year, we got funding from the Clean Water Fund to take, to basically, um, if the EEG grant, we, we had to contribute about 100500 um, towards um, that project. And the Clean Water Fund is allowing us to use that money to obtain a restoration grant, um, basically use the same project that we already paid for, and use the town's contribution to receive another $99,000 for a restoration grant from Clean Water Fund. And also a resilient, well, yeah, so that's what that's for. Part of that, that project requirement was that the properties be deed restricted. Um, when we looked into it, we always thought that was deed restricted because most of the floodplain, the, the flood projects today all get deed restricted, um, saying you can't build on them. But in this case, the deed restriction had some terms to it, including maintaining a buffer. And the stream buffers are 50 feet, and, and you're not supposed to mow within that 50 feet. And so that's, I mean, that, that's the language that was on the deed restriction, which is before you tonight that we're seeking approval for. Um, and that is a, a stipulation of the grant funding and uh, uh, those projects are actually on, ongoing, but we can't, we can't claim the money from the state until the, until the we can't get reimbursed until uh, all the terms are addressed, which includes the deed restriction. So, so again, so I asked for this to be removed for that exact reason, right? I want to draw your attention to page 49, uh, section B, <clears throat> B1, the cutting of vegetation, right? So it says a uh, riparian buffer zone shall be established using do not mow signs. That's, that's a 50 foot area from the center of the stream. Is that correct? That's what your riparian rights are. This is right in the middle of a, currently right in the middle of an established residential neighborhood where you cannot, you will not be able to mow um, according to what the state is asking us to put in to the deed restriction. Um, I, I, I think that's gonna be an issue with, with snakes, mice, rodents, or whatever, or potentially could be. I, I, I would just ask that we go back to the state and, and see if there's any wiggle room or any negotiation there. I mean, we're, we're, we're not gonna develop the property, right? And it can't be developed. We've already established, uh, you made improvements from a drainage standpoint and the stream itself, right? Uh, in my opinion, is, is, is a, is a is a, it would be a natural area, right, coming through there. But not to be able to mow 
50 feet from the center of that stream, I, I mean, that's just about, I mean, in reality, that's probably more than half of that property that you're not going to be able to mow. So um, I think it's just something we ought to consider. I, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll leave it to, to you, but it's just something I, I to me, I think we ought to go back to the state just to see if there's any room there for some negotiation. I don't, I don't know that there is, and there may not be. But if we don't ask, we certainly aren't going to get it because we have the deed restriction in front of us tonight to approve. As soon as we approve it, then Bob will add that <laughs> and make it legal, right? So. Well, who's going to enforce the do, enforce the do not mow signs? All right. Yeah. I'm sorry. Well, it's who's public works. Enforce? Public works maintains it, so it, the do not mow signs would just help reinforce where the do not mow section would be. Any, I mean, any other questions or thoughts on that? Or do we make it a big garden? That's what I was wondering. Could we make this a big garden all across there? Then you can mow all you want to because it's part of the garden. Well, what, what they want. And Steve's a landscape architect, so he, he, should, he knows it better than I do, I think, but I, I get into it. They want it to return to an area that's a little swampy. Okay, so if you see the way at uh, Bob Wallace Kitty Park out there uh, on South Second Street. I do. Yeah, huh? I and do. That, that is uh, a, a little rough and swampy, and that's what they want. And, and as a result, it filters a lot of nitrogen out of the water before it gets into use because those wild plants that are not mowed suck up a lot of nitrogen. Uh, <clears throat> you can see we had a, a similar pond uh, behind uh, the medical center at the hospital, uh, and um, it apparently was mowed, and I don't think it does anything. It originally had a lot of nitrogen-sucking plants, but it doesn't now. So um, that's why they want to make it swampy and weedy, as they want to get the nitrogen out. Now, whether they would agree to something else, I don't know, but when you go in there and start mowing, you are going to not make it habitable for those kind of plants. Now, Steve, you know more about this stuff than I do. I just I, I end up with it because... I do a lot of real property law, and I end up dealing with these conservation easements. And that's what this basically is. No, that was well said. Stephen, what's planted there now? There was a seed mix that was put down. Um, I've got two sacks in my office. One is a like a wet mix, and one is a dry mix. Um, so the upland area is going to be the dry mix, and the stuff by the edge of the pond is the other mix. That was planted in. I have more seed, which I think may be an overseed to make sure that we have good coverage in the spring. Um, I can't say that a lot of weeds didn't come up. I know we had a big, a big uh, rainfall event and the whole site was almost underwater. Um, I don't know if that's affected how much seed has taken. If, you know, if that had germinated prior to the flood, that is something to, do, to be determined. Um, but we do have more seed mix, which again, I think the, if, if the native grass seeds and flowers um, were well established, that would be a better look than, than weeds that might be coming in. And um, again, I don't know what the mix is currently. I will do an evaluation with the consultant um, next month when he's in town. Mm -hmm. Is it like blue stem and Indian grass, that kind of? I'm not sure what's native? in the mix. I'd have to double check what it was. Somewhat. I'm not as familiar with all the plant species here in the south. So basically, if we don't approve this, we don't get $100,000. Well, and let, uh, what I'm asking is let's go and let's, let's see if there's any negotiation there. If there's not, there's not, right? And then we have to make that decision of whether we, we seek the, the grant reimbursement or not. I, I don't believe this was brought to the town, to the to the council's attention um, at the beginning of this project, and I can I feel rest assured that you plus myself will get complaints about it. I'm just just want you to know. And so all I'm doing is asking that we go and at least have the conversation back with the state to see if there's any wiggle room there, any meat in the middle, or anything. And if there's not, come back to us next next time, you know, when we, when we bring it back up and, and then we, we'll, we'll have to deal with it. Obviously, we want to get reimbursed, <laughs> you know, for the funding. Can we, so. can we um, since we can't mow it, I understand that, but you talk about seeding it, is there a way that we can seed it in such a way as to prevent 
uh, I mean, so some type of plants or, or growth that could limit the use of the growth of uh, grass and weeds and, because they suff it out. You know what I'm talking about? There's a thing that would go more in a, again, that marshy type of thing. Is there some, you know, working with the head work with a horticulturist that, that knows how to do that, but would we have the ability to do something like that? We don't, once it's in there, we, don't, we can't mess with it, but do we have the ability to put something in there to do more control that we want to control it with? And so just, good luck, wild growth, you know? I, I do think you can hand plant. Um, I'm not sure what species. I'd be looking for native species. But yeah, you, can, you could hand plant or, or uh, target certain planting areas to add more flowers or something like that to make it look more interesting. Uh, maybe yeah, some garden we plants might want to thrown in. Too, to see if we can if we can control that. The key for us, we don't want a bunch of weeds growing up over there. People will complain, but if you have natural wild, uh, 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 you know, natural wild, uh, um, you know, vegetation that's not unattractive to the eyes, nobody's gonna complain. And you're not gonna cut that back because there are some stuff we wouldn't cut. I mean, there's some growth that you don't cut because it's just. It's what it is. Mm -hmm. So if that's the case, but wild grass growing is not going to be good, but something we can control, you know, that's controlled by its you know, natural thing. So maybe that's something we can look at too, right? Sure. Because then we, we don't have just a bunch of growl wild grass growing 50 feet. That wouldn't be good. Right. <laughs> is that something? I mean, yeah, I can you, take you that message that's back if that's the will list. of the council. Talk about or at least come back or maybe come back to the council with what we, you know, all right. What are some of the options that we might be able to do in, in that area? All right. So. All right. Do you need a motion or anything for that? We need a motion to table it or, or just to um, table it the next month? Table it. Table it the next month. But I don't, I don't think we need to do anything with it. Okay. I, I will say the guy out there who does these easements is fairly easy to talk to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And that's all I'm saying but, right? but, is let's just see what, what our options are. So. I don't know what the plant, the plant, finding out what the plants that might uh, uh, please them are would be helpful, Stephen. Yeah. yeah. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Then uh, we're moving on to our next item, which was the surplus property. So unless you, unless the council has any additional questions on this, I asked for this to be removed just because there are some items on there that I asked some questions on. And I think staff was a little uncertain as far as the age and the condition of some of the items that are on that list. And so I think staff is going to go back and, 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 and check those items and then just get back with us. Uh, on that. I mean, there's no rush, uh, you know, to do it. So unless there's specific questions, that's really the only reason I ask for that to be removed. Um, it's just so that staff can get us a better idea of the condition of that, that property, some, some pieces of property. Any, is there any questions or anything from anybody on that? Okay. All right. All right, and then let's see, the, the third item, please keep me honest here, I believe was the sewer line assessment, which was a consent item number 10. Is that, is that right, Councilman Scott? Yes. That's a stormwater mapping survey? That, that, is, that's, that is true, okay. that's correct, sorry. My terminology may have been off there. But. Um, is there a specific question or you wanna know what this item is? So, um, Councilman Scott, I think, had some specific questions. Do you want the planning director to kind of give an overview first? If you don't mind, just kind of give sure. an overview of the project. Um, I can, and then I think Councilman Scott had some specific questions okay. there. Well, this, this item is a um, result of the stormwater grant we received um, earlier in the year, um, part of which was the ERU study, the uh, infra, uh, impervious study. That was part of the funds, and the second part of the funds was for mapping our stormwater infrastructure. If you recall that our new stormwater program requires the town to map 15% of its, its um, infrastructure until it's all done each year. Um, we've got a, um, a contract with Survey and Mapping LLC to do 
um, mapping of our infrastructure. And it looks as though we may get most or all of it done for that amount. We're not really sure yet, but um, talking to Bill, it sounds like it's a pretty good contract and it looks like it's, it's likely to, to get us pretty far down the road, definitely more than 15%. And we're basically going to do as much as we can up to that budget amount, um, hopefully do the entire, entire town. So beyond that, uh, what questions do you have? The, the questions I have, I understand the point of this. Um, my real question is, once they get this stuff mapped, are they going to provide it to the town electronic or on paper? How will yes. it be stored? We'll have a GIS um, database of all the infrastructure. Will we be able to use that data for maintenance later? Absolutely. Okay, good. And the other question I have, and I don't know who's going to, who's overseeing this contract and the payments of this company? Um, that would be myself and Bill, the town engineer. And of course, finance also keeps us in line. That's what I needed. Thank you. Yep. Any other questions for the planning director on this specific topic? May so I make a motion we approve it? But do we have any other questions? Yeah, I was going to ask one other question. Uh, we're going to map this mount. Why, what's the next step? And we just have it for future maintenance needs? or It's required of our stormwater program, so we just have to do it as part of, it's like an unfunded mandate by the state, but they're actually funding it with through the grant money. Okay, um, kind of like the thing with the water. It's something we have to do. That well, we have to do it, but it also gives us information, so... Um, we have a better idea of how to handle our stormwater in the future and um, I guess for modeling, that sort of thing. Right. Modeling Thank and maintenance. How, how long do you think it'll take them to, to do, like first? Um, I think I put in there, it's, is it a two year contract? Two, two years, yeah. um, I don't know how long it'll take, mm -hmm. but that's the contract. Okay, good. I mean, I think this is a- We'll certainly get 15% of it done and to keep up with our program. Yeah, definitely, definitely a good thing, something that's needed. So any other questions for planning director? If not, I'll entertain a motion. So move, Mayor. Second. The motion has second to approve the contract with <clears throat> Sam for uh, stormwater infrastructure mapping. A motion has second. All in favor? Aye. Uh -huh. Any opposed? Motion Thank carries. Thank you. Thank you, sir. All right, so now we will move on to the business item consideration and request for approval to adopt amendments to the Amazon Incentive Grant. Mr. Manager, is that you, sir? Yeah, I, I can start out. Okay. Um, Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, what's in front of you tonight is a request from Amazon to uh, extend their incentive agreement with the town uh, for tax grants. Um, currently, we are in an agreement with Amazon to grant back taxes through the first seven years of their operation. Uh, at a rate that is on page 167 of your your packet. Um, basically, the first four, three years, we, we grant back 90% of the real property tax, year four, 80%, year five, 70%, year six, 60%, and year seven, 50%. And for the first five years, we also grant back half of their uh, personal property taxes. Um, as everyone knows, there's been, you know, we, we've had significant issues throughout the country, really, with uh, COVID and supply chain issues, and I don't want to speak for, for Amazon, but, but uh, personnel issues, um, getting things done since 2019 has been tough, and it's starting to get better. 
So Amazon was not able to open its doors. It was not able to meet the job requirements, the 500 jobs that are required to, re to receive these grants for their taxes um, during the first two years. So they've paid their taxes in full during that time. And we have used that revenue as tax revenue, just like we use it for all other tax revenue in the general fund. Uh, what they're asking is to push that seven year period out um, instead of starting in 2023, started in 2025, and it'll be the same amount of time, still seven years. It's just moving it to a different seven years, two years into the future. Um, Chris Johnson is here. Uh, the county has already addressed this issue. You might, you might remember back before Amazon was actually built, um, uh, we, we created this uh, incentive to bring them here and the county was part of that. We all had a group meeting and the county approved. Uh, they're, they're very close to the same thing and we approved it um, in order to assist them with their finances to come here to Smithfield. So the county has approved the uh, grant revisions as you see in front of you for themselves um, last month. So now this is coming to you for the, the town share of that to decide how you want to handle it. And uh, also with uh, Chris is uh, Mike Lindbergh from, from Amazon here to answer questions as well. So, uh, Chris? Welcome, sir. Thank you very much. Chris Johnson, 516 South 4th Street, Smithfield, North Carolina. But uh, I'm here on behalf of the county. Um, Mike covered everything very well. Uh, as he indicated, the, the uh, Amazon, we've, we've been in discussion with them for the past uh, going on 12 months or better about the status of their project. Obviously, uh, a lot of public uh, has contacted me and and said, you know, what's the what's the status of it? And I've told them that uh, that no incentives have been given to the company until they meet their obligations. And so they uh, and the company is agreeing to that, and they're not asking for anything beyond just uh, some variances and some extension on the timeline. Um, we have uh, actually pushed it back to uh, the county for the milestone on the, on the final investment of June 30th, 2024, and the employment on June 30th, 2025. I'm going to let uh, Michael uh, or Mike uh, Lindbergh from Amazon kind of discuss his internal timeline, uh, but they have already met. There's two things that they needed to meet. Obviously, the financial contribution, which they need to make sure that they met that threshold, which at that time was $100 million. They have actually met that and have exceeded that, that point. The only thing that they have not done, obviously, is begin to hire uh, people. And the reason that they haven't been able to hire people is because of supply chains, racking systems that are internally uh, onto the system. Those things are in place, and uh, Mike can share what uh, they'll be doing in the first quarter of next year. This may not be a non, uh, may be a non-issue um, because of uh, their 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 potential of, of, of beginning sooner than later. Uh, but obviously, we just needed to have a a, a firm date uh, there, and so we're just asking that it would be simpler for my office as well as the county, just for both the county and the town, to mirror up, so we're not having to keep track of three or four different uh, grants doing the very same thing. So um, with that being said, I'd like to just ask uh, Mike Lindbergh from Amazon to, to come up and share his thoughts on where they are. Uh, Chris, one, one yeah. second. So you did, I want the public to understand, you did mention there's been no tax deferment at all at this point. That is correct. I mean, for the town of Smithfield, as in a taxpayer for the town of Smithfield, this is a huge win. Right. Because you got to remember, this was not, this was in the ETJ of the town of Smithfield. This is found money for the town, right. and so by voluntary annexation as a part of that, they agreed to come into the town of Smithfield. Um, so the you know the fire rates and all the other stuff. I mean, there's there's a there's a windfall there. Obviously, as as uh, Mr. Scott alluded to, during this time they're paying their their full shares and not getting anything back because they have not met that, and they won't meet they won't get anything back until they meet the the, the, the employment uh, thresholds that that's been outlined. Yeah, I just wanted that for the record. Yes, no one did hear that. And I and I appreciate that, Councilman Wood, and and also any time that I, I stand before the public and talk about incentives, is that this is not any other tax person's money. This is basically their own money that they're paying in and they're getting a percentage back. So we're not taking it from, you know, any other citizen in Smithfield. It's basically we're only talking about their money that they pay in 
and getting a percentage back. So we're, we're good stewards. We have control over that so that if they fail to meet any of the requirements, we can immediately stop those payments so that we don't have to worry about any kind of clawback provisions or anything. So there's safeguards in place. Yes, sir. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Welcome, Mike. Well, thank you. Thank you, Chris, for the introduction. Um, so I wanted to provide you all with an update. Uh, obviously, as we mentioned uh, previously, the initial uh, requirement was for us to provide those jobs by the end of this year, December 31st, 2023. As mentioned, a uh, combination of macroeconomic conditions, including supply chain issues, um, have caused us you know, over the last year to rebalance our uh, facility network, and we are now ready to move forward with this facility. Um, we are looking right now at a end of Q1 launch for the facility. Um, so, like I said, these jobs are right around the corner. We do not anticipate needing the full length of the extension, uh, but it would be good to get that in writing and have it done once and have it be consistent, and that's what we're asking for today. So, so Mike, I have to clarify this. So, you said end of Q1. End of Q1... 20, sorry, 2024. Okay. Very right. good. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Yep, absolutely. That's outstanding news. Yeah, that's, uh, that's very good news. And for, for the public, that means month-wise. Supposed to know what Q1 means. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> first, like first, first quarter of 2024, right? right? Which means what? You're, 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 still, you're, still, you're still hoping to, yeah. to launch Looking towards sometime the end of March. In March. That, Is that, that correct? Time. So with that, um, we are looking for around 500 jobs. We're looking at salaries and $15 plus range. Um, and so, I, like I said, I think this is gonna be a great win for the community here. Um, right now, uh, hiring wise, typically about uh, 50 to 60 days out, we commence our hiring efforts, identifying you know, how, what our approach to the market's gonna be. 30 days out from a launch is when we look to lock in the, our first round of hires. Uh, we typically like to continue hiring at about 100 jobs a week until we hit the right balance for the uh, capacity that we need as we get into the launch phase. And again, I think we will uh, be able to scale up to the agreed upon 500 jobs in a relatively short period of time. And understand this is a one-time extension. Yes, sir. Just make sure the public knows if, if this was to pass, this will be the only pass, I guess, extension. Well, let's, let's hope we don't have to do no, that. Sorry, I hope so, too. Let's certainly but hope we don't saying, have to do that, Mike. Like so let, let, let's, hit, yes. let, let's hit that timeline. Let's get those jobs posted. I just and, want the uh, let, let's, let's get that. This is a pass. Yeah. It's a one-shot yeah. thing. So. Any, any, any questions? I have or? one question, mate. Sir, is the building complete now with the infrastructure? Because last time we heard it was still, the building was complete, but the infrastructure. So currently right now, the building is complete. All of our material handling and equipment is installed inside. Uh, we are currently going through punch list items and, and uh, uh, testing phases at this moment. Good. That's great news. We would love to have another tour uh, we had the tour when you didn't have any of the half, half the equipment wasn't inside. Mm -hmm. Building was beautiful on the outside, but inside needed some work. And we were, they said that we, you look at giving us a tour when you got everything up and running. So we would love to. I'll yeah. make sure we can get something all lined up for you. That'd be great. Yeah, thank you. That'd be great. Outstanding. I got a couple questions. Uh, so we entered in a contract in 2021. Y'all come do this, build a building add these jobs by this date. If you don't do that, you don't get the tax incentive. So we've done this contract, you hadn't done that, and now we're here, oh, sorry, poor 1.3 trillion Amazon, mm -hmm. help us out some more. What, why should Smithfield be a backstop for things not going your way? Sure. So I would say Because I'm in business too, yep. things haven't gone my way, but I can't go, oh, I really would like my tax, tax break. Yeah. Sure, I, I would say that we all were not. But. Well, before you answer that, mm -hmm. may I just interject one thing, right? So prior to this project, okay, got the tax bills right here, that you were in the, that, that piece of property was in the Smithfield Fire District. We collected $39.46 a year. Last year we collected, because you guys elected to be 
brought into the city limits of Smithfield. Without even opening the doors yet, we collected $336,528 in tax revenue. This year, we stand to collect $501,893. So, no, we've already collected $500. We've already collected $501,893. So about $800,000 in tax revenue the town of Smithfield has already received on this project. I'd say that's a fair amount more than the $39.46 that we got a few only because, years ago. <laughs> only because they're choosing not to open. If they had opened, I we would it. not receive that money. I get it. So so with that being said, Mike, I'll let, and, and fair question, Council I mean, Chair. And, and it's, a, it's absolutely we, we a fair deal, question. Yeah. And the but deal's I, not working out in your favor. Yeah, but I just wanted to point that out that to the citizens that are listening. We have gotten eight hundred thousand right. dollars in tax, but but a very fair question. So, Mike, do you Gentlemen can you address you that money question? Gentlemen, behind you, money and streets to be paved, and so. Yeah, yeah I, I appreciate your concern there. I, I just, I, I, I can, I, and I get where you're coming from. I, I, I really do. I'd be doing the same thing if I were you. But sure. go ahead. Uh, you know, I appreciate where you're coming from there. Um, you know, as as uh, the mayor just stated, I think that this situation is a win-win for everybody. Mm -hmm. um, you are now getting a significant amount of tax revenue even when the incentive commences that was mm -hmm. not present before. Uh, we are not coming back and asking for something additional to what we had previously. We're asking for an extension uh, to be part of the team, part of the community, and work together here to make a great situation for everybody. So, did we let me get did did we uphold our end of the deal? Has our staff have we run? I wasn't 100 percent involved before it. Did we did we run water to you? Did the power run to your Duke Energy? I mean, we upheld every end of our deal of the bargain. Have, did y'all have any issues with the town? No complaints staff? whatsoever. No. Nope. So we did everything we were supposed to. But because the downturns and nothing that's out of our hands, we had in this contract as a protection for, 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 for the citizens of Smithfield, that if you don't do what you say you're going to do, you got to ante up and pay like everybody else. That's where I'm coming from. Any, any other questions? May I have one question for the attorney? Sure. It, it, and maybe for Mr. Johnson. Um, is this... Uh, contract transferable okay. is there a clause in there that says it is or is not it's not transferable Listen, if it was a, it become a different owner different owner so you're asking whether we can we, we you can transfer this kind of thing no i'm asking if they can transfer it no, yeah it's not required that you transfer it but you can require it right okay it's not, owner. it's not automatic that if Amazon were to sell that building to somebody else that they get the tax incentives. I think that's your question. That's exactly right. right. Yeah, it, it is not. Okay. So this would be for Amazon. Yes. Amazon not, not for any yeah. potential buyer. Yeah. And all that being said, I, I would have voted yes for this deal, but we put safeguards, a contract that helps both sides. And we put safeguards in, and now we're just pushing it back. Again, uh, fair points, right? Okay. But but it's not any, it's not money that we're, we're we're not per se losing any. We're losing any. We're losing. Yes, I mean, we're, as we're deferring this, but it's 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 tax money. Again, we went from thirty nine dollars to over eight hundred thousand dollars that we've already collected, right? So, um, again, we're just we're just May deferring I have one more on the remainder. Mm -hmm. Mr. Johnson, Chris. Um, I just want to extend a thank you for the efforts and with Amazon, I understand stuff happens, but um, just to make sure that we're all clear that this, the property out there is not fully developed. This is an industrial park. That's correct. Yeah. How, what, what other things are we seeing? Well, I mean, obviously, with the with the downturn of economy, and the main thing was the interest rates have have, have everything has slowed down across the nation. Um, the, uh, the 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 there's no capital out there uh, of uh, available funds to to do projects like this. Obviously, Samet Corporation owns the remaining part of the of the the land, um, and I know that they're working with the Foundry uh, Corporation 
uh, commercial group out of Raleigh to market the, the, the front section. Um, the, the town of Smithfield, we have uh, have sat in on several other projects that have considered the back section, if you want to call it How that. much space, I mean, just in relative terms? Well, they've, they've got various drawings of what could be built out there. So there could be three buildings in the neighborhood of 125 to 150,000, or they could be one at 150 and, and one back at the back at 400,000. So it, it, it's kind of a blank slate right now. So. Thank you. But uh, but obviously you know we've got the uh, the Nyer building that's that, that's coming up in in uh, in on Brogdon Road that uh, obviously hopefully we'll have that that leased uh, and 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 relatively soon because there's there's just no product out there so. So, so I have Sorry. a question. So uh, also <clears throat> then, but based upon the delay, in a way, the delay also benefits the town of Smithfield yeah. because we get a percentage. Right of the, the the property we get a percentage of the property tax and if you're if the economy is low there's not as much property on there that's going to be taxable so as the economy increases and improves and rebounds hopefully as we all hope will happen down the road there actually be more property to be taxed giving us more percentage of that 90 percent 50 percent of the value is actually more than it would be if we did it today because today the, the economy is totally different. So actually delaying the start of this is also somewhat beneficial to the town of Smithfield because the value, the amount of money potentially would be more as you develop in the future mm -hmm. because the economy hopefully turning around because we've had a bad economy for a number of years. And is that not correct too? I mean... If I understand the way you've described please it. Please. <laughs> <laughs> But as the economy increases, you got more. You'll have more property on the space, which will be more real property. I mean, more uh, personal property and real property. More stuff there. That's right. Is that correct? That's as right. it expands That's out. That's exactly right. Yeah. My understanding that you could have uh, at one time. You initially was talking about when we were over there. They said somewhere five, six, seven hundred people, but there could be as high as twelve hundred people at certain seasonal time periods. Is that not correct? Also, I'll leave that up there. I mean, that's it. yeah. Our, 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 uh, Workforce does flex or, you know, seasonally, so it can expand beyond that. Now, this is a this is a unique facility. I'm understanding again what we were told. One of only three in your fleet of buildings, so we're excited about that. That we're unique. We like being unique. Uh, the 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 question is, at those facilities that you have, you have some running now, I assume already. Correct. So this this facility is what we call a IXD or cross dock facility. So you can think of this as kind of the the entry point for our product. So it is really the fulfillment centers that feed our fulfillment centers, um, if that makes sense to you. So, but is this a new new? This is a new concept, right? This is a new concept. We're we've been working through a revamping of our network, uh, which again has been part of what what we've been going through over the last year. Is this has been delayed. Um, so these IXD facilities really are becoming the core of our network. So do you have any that's currently running, I guess, my question is right now? Uh, yes. You do? Okay. And, and I'm assuming that, that, they, that, they, uh, that they'll fill up their capacity also as they grow. They also get more capacity as they grow, right? They, they do over time. Typically, as we, as we ramp up uh, the use of these, we build some, some space for expansion internally. So we're not going to be starting all the jobs day one. Uh, they do ramp up over time. And so with the uh, uh, tax value of this that we get, so that's my point. My point is taxing also increases because you have more properties, correct? Hmm. Well, I, I suppose you have more um, employees. Uh, yeah, I think that's going to be about the property. same because this is not for the entire West Smithfield Business Park development. It's this is just for Amazon. Mm -hmm. This this incentive is just for right. Amazon, not for the I'm other talking property. About their yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But now, if they were to add additional properties there, it would that would be true. Yes, or any any other real property. Um, right, the, the the additional, I mean, uh, personal property. Excuse me. Um, yes, that that is true. That is true. Yeah, that, yeah, that's right. Yeah, if they, that, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, that would be the case. Yep. yep. That's what I was referring to. Yep. Yep. I mean, and, and and then you know the other thing is is the, 
you know, Mike, I, I, would, I certainly hope that these jobs are done by quarter, quarter, quarter one of 2024. Uh, but another thing is, is for two years, we've collected over $800,000, but it is, it has given us the opportunity to put some additional infrastructure in place and to plan for the growth with, with the, 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 the jobs and everything else. There does come some, some challenges for the town of Smithfield, right? And that, that has enabled us over the last two years to, you know, to be able to plan to put things into place traffic-wise, road-wise, everything else, and so forth. So um, I, don't, I don't necessarily, though I would love for it to have opened a year or so ago, gradually moving into to, um, the, the development, um, I don't think is necessarily a bad thing, right, for, for the planning and what it, how it impacts our staff and, uh, and so forth. So I certainly don't think that it, uh, it certainly is a bad thing, you know, so. Let me just say, as the district, as the councilman for that district, I will tell you that everyone's excited about the having Amazon presence there because it will also draw and, and revitalize a very depressed <laughs> area of our town over years because it used to be a higher, in the, so we're anticipating this will also increase a lot of things as a result of that. So we appreciate you guys coming for sure. Anything we can do for you while you're there, let us know, because you know, we'll be glad to, uh, we want to be a, we want you guys to be a good partner with us and a good partner with y'all. Appreciate that. Any other questions? I just don't want to sell ourselves short. We are very well located for any industrial, 95 and 40. We made a deal. I think we should stick with it. That's all I got to say. Mm. Any May other I make a motion we approve the request? Yep. I second it. I have a motion and a second to approve the amendments to the contract. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Nope. Motion carries. Thank you, gentlemen. Mike, thank you very much. Chris, thank you very much. And uh, we are looking forward to the opening. And Chris, we're looking forward to other buildings and stuff in that business part, right? So uh, thank you. Thank you for... Uh, yeah, and I, uh, absolutely. Thank but, you. but thank you so much for, for, your, for your assistance. Chris, thanks as always. All right, we will now move on to our next business item, discussion concerning uses for additional funding received from John County for the fire department. Chief, welcome, sir. Thank you, Mayor, Council. Uh, certainly appreciate the opportunity, opportunity to speak on the fire funding supplement. Um, as you're aware, we have received uh, 200 or will receive $214,000 this fiscal year. Um, as the county commissioners approved earlier this year, the fire funding matrix, um, this $214,000 is to be provided in 12 equal payments, which will be given to the town of Smithfield in the amount of $17,833 each month, which that began in July of this year. Um, with this money coming to the town, we wanted to carefully consider uh, what we were to do with this funding. The uh, objective of the committee that was put together for the funding matrix, their main objective was to provide a positive impact to the fire service in Johnston County. And our part coming to Smithfield is $214,000. And so we want to do our due diligence and provide the best that we can provide for our citizens here in Smithfield. So upon that careful uh, consideration, we certainly wanted to look at what our priorities were. And as many of you know, we have a need of additional people, personnel, to provide fire protection. We also wanted to make sure that this was not just a one-time uh, supplement that we would receive and then would, would go away. And so through the, uh, through the committee's planning process, 
they have actually established a strategic plan uh, for the funding portion of our supplement and all throughout Johnston County. With that uh, strategic plan, we, we've seen our fire chiefs come together across the county in discussion of that strategic plan. Uh, and it's a, it's a great plan. We have, uh, we've seen dates of next year holding departments accountable for certain aspects of the use of funding and all throughout into 2028, 27, 28 uh, fiscal year. And so we see this as reoccurring, reoccurring funds and we certainly don't think that this money is going to go away. We believe it's going to be here. It's going to be here to help the people of Johnston County. So in looking at our priorities of personnel, we, we have to discuss the model that we currently are using at the fire department. We work 24 hour shifts. We have three shifts working 24 hours and on each shift we have six personnel. Of course, with two stations that puts three people at our station one and three are housed at our station two. Our request would be to hire some personnel and with the amount that we are funded, we could hire three people and with it being re recurring uh, revenue, uh, we would be able to continue that uh, for years to come. Um, the additional, if approved, the additional firefighter would be housed at our station one. We already have um, facilities and everything is ready to go uh, with that. With regards to how we would onboard them, uh, there would be expenses uh, to, to bring them on to the fire department with gear, uniforms, uh, and so we, we've got allocated in there, and you can see on page 201, I believe it is, in your agenda, uh, you'll see the addition of the $5,500 per firefighter. Uh, if we hire three or create three new positions, uh, that total would be $16,500. And of course, if it's approved, then we would have our process of hiring, uh, which would take place over the next month and a half, and we would actually bring those firefighters to work, uh, hopefully January of 2024. And so on page 201, you also see there's a six month uh, compensation of Per firefighter, thirty thousand eight seventy seven ninety four, and for three firefighters, ninety two thousand six thirty three eighty one. Obviously, for an annual gross or annual payroll cost of sixty one seven fifty five per position, uh, that would total one hundred eighty five thousand. Let me get to the right one here, $185,267.61 for that firefighter. And then we would have to add in the initial cost, which is a, a one-time cost with some maintenance cost as, uh, as they stay with us. So. The recommendation is from the staff is to approve the the request for three new firefighter positions. And so I'll take any questions that you guys have. Any questions for the, for the chief? So just to clarify, Chief Daltrey, um, as long as the tax base continues to grow in the rural districts, um, whether it be by development or increase in values, this number will only go up in the future. There's no real way that it would ever go down. Is That's that correct. correct? Uh, what we're seeing, obviously, growth in, in Johnston County. And uh, one thing with this funding matrix is the formation of a single service district, which would be countywide. Um, with the growth in Johnston County, we don't see any way that that number would decrease. Okay. Any other questions for Chief? So just kind of uh, making sure I understand this fully. 
fact, when we did budget time, this, this conversation came up, and this is before they had figured out this money, and we were talking about how we, go, we do calls for the rural districts and we get a conversation back from the county in which is, comes out to be $30, $50, whatever it was. Nowhere, nowhere near covered our cost to go make that run. Correct. So this is kind of the way the county supplementing, supplementing that. Supplementing that. Absolutely. I mean, it's, the, I mean you, you in, spend any time downtown, you guys are making plenty of calls. I mean, when you guys are at <laughs> the touch of truck at the Baptist Church, uh, they left twice and on small calls. So, yes, I mean, sir. I, I'm just. Yes, sir. We, you know, the, the matrix itself is, it, it looks very complicated. There's a lot of numbers all over the place and the committee that was put together, they really done a fantastic job. This, this started about three years ago um, and, and just to try to make a positive impact on the county and what it has transformed into, uh, we, we've already seen some huge benefits across the county with departments not providing some services and, and they're, they're coming on board and now they can actually afford to provide some of those services. Uh, fortunately for us, we're providing most of those services anyway. And so for us, this is, this is an additional $214,000 that we hadn't budgeted for. So my question is, so I know you talked about uh, salaried uh, firemen, but you, we also, are still fortunate to have a mix of um, volunteers. Some places don't have many volunteers. We still have volunteers. How are you supplementing the, I mean, how are you, uh, uh, you know, can we say three and three and one? And so we didn't talk about, you didn't talk about the volunteers. Uh, so typically, um, you know, volunteerism is, is kind of difficult in the world we live in today, I know. But how is your volunteer staff doing in relation to this? Because, I mean, that does have a factor in how you, fill these, uh, the demand. You know, if you only have three, three and three, then you got six firefighters, all you got. But is that typical, you only have six firefighters or you typically, you have the volunteers to supplement that. So you typically have nine firefighters or you typically have 10 or six, I mean, seven. I mean, you see my point? How many do you, when, we, when we're looking at typical, given any shift, typically, what would you have counting your volunteer firefighters? That, that's a great question question and uh, I certainly appreciate you you asking that we do obviously we do have uh, volunteer firefighters we have part-time firefighters and we have full-time firefighters we have a volunteer program where we we uh, uh, we bring in people from outside of our fire district and they can pull shifts and so to answer your question honestly it, it depends and what that means is during the day, people are at work. And so the, the volunteer firefighter is, is not always able to leave and come to the fire station and get on a fire truck and, and run the fire call. Um, at night, we do have more uh, at night, more participation from our volunteer staff, whether they are in district or out of district. And so, to look at a, an average, like I said, it, it does depend. Uh, we, can, we can put an average of about nine to 10 firefighters on, on an incident. It does depend on what type of incident or what type of emergency it is as well. For a structure fire, uh, our paging system will go through an all call and, and notify everyone. For some of the other incidents where a single engine response um, is is necessary, and that's all that's necessary, the three people on the truck can handle that. How many volunteers do you have right now? I mean, I know your number. What is your current volunteer staff numbers? So we have about ten volunteers, um, and that is between the in district and out of district um, programs. We have about ten. And, and that brings up a very good point, uh, Councilman. We, we are actually meeting Thursday morning with a group that we put together at Smithfield Fire Department 
uh, we've already met a couple of times to identify some ways that we can get in front of uh, some possible volunteer recruits. Um, for example, you know, we're starting early. Uh, we've, we've got plans this Friday to be at Smithfield Middle talking to eighth graders about the opportunities that they have uh, in the fire service. And we're making plans with Triple S to get in front of their students. And, and if we can capture them early, we feel like that we can keep the volunteers and the volunteerism in, in this town alive. And that's, that's our goal. You know, we, we want to draw as much of that as we can. Being realistic, if we go back 10, 15, 20 years ago, the number of calls, the number of requests for service have certainly changed a lot for us. And so when we speak of bringing people and, 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 and needing people, that is, that's where that comes from. The, the increased call volume, um, you know, we do rely heavily on our mutual aid departments, but there have been times where some of our people have gone mutual aid to kind of pay back that um, from, from those departments come to us, we also respond to them. And, uh, but there have been times where our people, some of our people have been gone and then we have a, a major emergency, a structure fire, which requires quite a few people on scene. Um, and so it, we, we have to, to look at what is most beneficial for our people. The bottom line is, you're, even though you appreciate your volunteers, you still need more permanent staff. That's, we, that's what we it do. comes down to. We do, and, and it's, it's unfortunate. Uh, I'm a volunteer. I volunteer at Brogdon. You guys uh, know that. It, it, but it is, it is something that, unfortunately, we, we seem to be losing. And, and hopefully we can reignite a fire, uh, no pun intended, uh, reignite a fire uh, in, in, in the volunteers or the recruits that, uh, that we have available in the town of Smithfield. Is this a positive step in our ISO, ISO rating? Absolutely. That is that certainly is one thing that uh, that that we got dinged on this past time. Um, we had the basically the same amount of people, but the problem is the the request for service versus the number of personnel. Um, the request went up. Our number of personnel didn't really go up, and so we saw a reduction in that ISO rating or in that point value for our um, effective force, if you will. So any people that we can add will certainly help with that. Any other questions, comments for the Chief? Mayor, I have a few comments I'd like to make. Jeremy, thank you for coming tonight and presenting this. Um, I, I just would like to publicly thank the Funding Matrix Committee for their efforts. Um, whether we realize it or not, this is what we call accountability of tax dollars. And that means that, um, you know, most of the city departments have already met all the criteria, like you mentioned, of the funding matrix categories. But it's going to only prove the service for the citizens of Johnson County. For Smithfield, um, I think it's important for us to note that this is additional funding. We're still getting the rural district funds that were already established. This is additional funding based on some math that they've changed over the creating the, their plan is to create the service district. But uh, the final point I want to mention on this is that, you know, for the last, since I've been on this council, um, all departments have asked for staff. And I know that in the last three chiefs we've heard from, that's been a number one thing. And it's important that we honor this request and I'll make sure that we have the staff we need for those emergencies. Having said that, Mayor, I make a motion we approve this as written. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Uh -huh. Any opposed? Motion carries. Chief, uh, I want to thank you, sir, for for this and putting together the plan and, and you know, we met 
uh, several months ago over in your office, and you told me you weren't just going to rush into things. You were going to look at it, make sure the funding was there to stay, and I guess with this strategic plan, is that approved yet, or it's close? It, it is the very, county, very close. close. Right? We, we had a meeting on the uh, strategic plan at a Chiefs Association meeting last Thursday night, right. and uh, the, we are getting some feedback from some of the chiefs. A majority have zero problem with that. Mm -hmm. There may be a, a few little things to fine tune, um, but it's, in, in our opinion, it's a, it's a solid plan. And, uh, and so, Councilman Scott, we certainly, certainly do appreciate the, uh, the kind words to the, to the committee. Those guys have, have worked diligently for the last three years to, to, to do something for the fire service, and uh, this has certainly been a, a good step in the right direction. And I think you'll probably see some more of it. Good. One other comment. Um, I don't remember what the specific was, but I know how close we were on an ISO to be a better rating. But I'm sure that this will make a difference for Smithfield. It absolutely will. We, we were very close to being in, in ISO class two, uh, which would greatly help the commercial properties and uh, or the insurance rating for the commercial properties. And uh, we, were, we were very close to that. And so um, moving forward with, with things like that can make a big difference for our folks in Smithfield. Awesome. So, thank you. Great. Thank you. Nice job. Thank you, sir. All right. Moving on to our next business item, consideration and request for approval to offer retention incentives for police department personnel and hiring incentives to recruit new police officers. Chief. How are you, Appreciate sir? it. I'm good. Thank you, sir. Stability. I'm, I'm sure that uh, we're all happy that we're all back and returned again, and I think that's what we all like, the stability here and with, uh, with our council members and what we're looking for, and that's what we're looking for in our police department. I'm going to bore you with some numbers really quickly. 506 fewer people joined the ranks of law enforcement in North Carolina than the year before. 45% increase in resignation. 18% increase in... Uh, Resignation. I'm sorry, no, 45% increase in retirement, and 492 less people took the academy last year than before. So there's not that many people that want to be a police officer anymore. The numbers are going down. The competition for police officers is at an all-time high. It's a great time to be a cop. It's a hard time to be a boss. It's a hard time to maintain a department. I don't come to Unite as an alarmist. I come to Unite as a realist. This is a pivotal time in the Smithfield Police Department. We need stability. I need to maintain the people that I have now. This week we have one resignation. Since I've been here, we've had two resignations. I've been able to hire three, and now we're still down two. We can't maintain that way. We need stability. So what I'm asking for today is that we use lap salaries to show our police departments that we support them, that we're here for them, and that we understand their value and we need that support and we need the stability. The lap salaries of the positions that we haven't been able to fill yet will fund this. Um, the way that we got the numbers, if we need to go into the numbers, is that we used um, a matrix that the state and the feds, the federal departments used to fill hard to, uh, hard to replace employees, like law enforcement and other very high places. So we used the funds, or we used the numbers from an average salary, we took 15%, and we actually went below that. That's how we came to this number of $7,500 as a retention incentive. Working with the town manager and our finance director, we'll put the necessary hooks and requirements to make sure that that's exactly what it is. It's a retention incentive. We are using this to give me stability for a year to make sure that our police department continue to grow and maintain what we have now. Uh, the other monies in there is for our civilian staff. As anybody knows, the civilian staff is just as important at times as my um, law enforcement staff, so I'd like to be able to keep the stability throughout the department. Questions? Questions for Chief. How far under budget are we now in this year? 
I mean, with all the vacancies, it's... I know when I talked to the town manager, the initial, this was a few months ago, and, and of course the numbers are going to change as I add people and people subtract, so the numbers are going to vary. But we had 254,000 as a few months ago that we were above. Now that number could be higher now because we haven't hired uh, to the full staff. Chief, you mentioned you would put parameters or... I can't remember exactly what you said, the word for word, but uh, borders in place, I guess, to keep them for a year? Yes, sir. How, how do you plan on doing that? So if I was an officer and I got $7,500, because that's... Of course, we attention. wouldn't pay it to you all up front. So we would pay you... It, a, a it would be overtime. So that's that's the way we would keep you. would pay okay. it half in front and half at the very end of the year. We would also put um, things included. If you have to stay out of trouble, you have to make sure you're workforce is ex exceptional. We, you have to be a good employee. Sure. Okay. And the incentive, the hiring incentive would be the same, basically on the same scenario with that? The hiring incentive to make us competitive with surrounding agencies, a $5,000 bonus, that's if a person is currently certified. Um, okay. If they're certified right now and they're ready to come here and work, uh, to incentivize them to come here, I think we do a 5000 bonus. That's above our hiring salary. Okay. What is the hiring salary on there? We're, for some reason, I'd really love to say we're at 50000 but we're at 49977 So uh, that is another thing I'm going to work with the town manager to see if we can go to say 50000 It sounds a lot better, but 49977 is our hiring if you have no experience. Just in reading your write-up, what is the FTO? Field training. Field training. Okay. Officer. All yes, right. Sir. I was just getting put that together okay and are, are you the um, officers we've lost over the past few years have they been more lieutenant sergeant say more senior or is it more in the patrol last, entry one two three four five six years of service in the last 15 months we've lost 12 officers we're losing an officer about one a month and some of them have been for retirement but the majority that I look at the list here um, were to other fellow law to another law enforcement agency. And to answer your question, the majority of them were the entry level. We had some retirements, of course. Well, I mean, uh, yeah, yeah, that were retired. But that's going to happen always. Yes, sir. Um, okay. uh, this might be more for M Mr. Scott here. Say, uh, with the uh, two hundred fifty-four thousand unspent dollars in police department, does that just roll over to fund balance next? If we do nothing, does that just roll over to fund balance. Yeah, that's exactly what will happen to it. It will roll over into fund balance and then be reallocated for next budget throughout the general fund. But we, if this is approved, we have enough money there to, in the, the 254000 to implement this program. Yes, sir. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Over the next year, I guess, if, if you want to call it. Yes, sir. Because you said it'll be paid off through a, a year, throughout the 12 months. Yes, it wouldn't be all up front. Right. It would be okay. spread out to, that's what I, we designed it for. It's a retention bonus. It's a retention incentive. We're incentivizing the remaining people that we have, the valued employees that we have to stay. So, Chief, can you can you explain that, though, how that will be paid? Um, and, 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 and again, I think there's, there's, there's tweaks to come, but the design that I have is that we would pay them as soon as the funds are available, half, and then the other half at the end of the year. So we would get 12 months. So for an officer that's making 75, that may get the $7,500, we pay them half. Yes, sir. What if they leave the next day? If they leave, again, talking to Mike Scott, um, the town manager, I think we're going to put uh, a contract that they'd have to sign if you live before that. Um, we do have a sample one from the state, which they do it, and there's dates and times of work. If you get six months into it, you've earned this much, and then if you get the second pay, you have to return it. So it's on a prorated basis of how long they're there. And, but we don't have that yet. We don't have that. We that can adopt can... The, the, the one that the state uses for their employees. I so think it I, works I, for us fine. I, I, I don't have an issue with, with this, right? I, I, I don't disagree that we need to do something, but I, but I also want to make sure that we we do it in a way that it's going to be beneficial, right? And that we're not just paying money. Oh, no, sir. And I also, just a comment, I mean, I think it should go to the officers and the officers that are on the street. Yes, sir. Right? Um, 
And then, and then you have in here part-time officers. Do we have part-time officers now? We do. We have one. And he has been a very long time <clears throat> serving officer. He's also our chaplain in our okay. department. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. And saves us many, many times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I, yeah. Okay. I was just kind of curious as far as from a part-time standpoint why we would look at that. So, okay. But, uh, but the state has kind of yes, sir, from your standpoint, is there any, any success of, of recouping that money should something like this happen? Because it's a lot of money, right? Yeah. And um, obviously we want to do something that's going to work. If it doesn't work, I mean, I know we've had employees in the past that we paid for um, educational training, and in there it says that they were to repay it back. They leave. We never get it. So, or, uh, you think we could be successful at recouping, or you can? It's just whether the cost is worth it. Right. And, and yeah, whether the benefit could be extended anyway. monthly, so that you know, if, if they leave, they so didn't get that next portion of the benefit. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Or could it be a monthly benefit like instead of a lump sum? Right. I would certainly look at doing something like that and starting to do all of a big chunk at, at one time. Right. Um, I, if you want to make this work. I understand, and I think what I'm looking for, and I think what the employees are looking for, is that uh, if they stay the council here, recognizes get it. their value and that, right. that they're valued employees and that we need them to stay here. Right. And if they stay here for and fulfill that obligation, they will get the yes, that amount. Yeah. But, but I, I, think, I think that's my concern, right? You said we're losing so many. What's to say that we, we don't pay, right? And then all of a sudden another agency, whether it's the sheriff's department or whoever, all of a sudden drops ten thousand dollars and then just like what we what we've been going right we gave a tremendous pay rate to our officers and to, to to town staff not too long ago right and and then all of a sudden as soon as we did that we were everybody was happy a month later the surrounded towns and sheriff's office went here boom and then we were, you know it was like this right so um, I just want to make sure that we, we do it where we, we, we know what I'm saying, and I, and I hope, and I certainly hope this does, right, um, that stability that, that's needed. But I would just say that anything we can do to, to make it where the officers are benefiting, the officers on the street, you know, I, I, I'd rather the money go to the you know, officers on the street that are day in, day out doing, doing the work on the street, and that it's benefiting them to stay with us, to show that we are committed to them, um, that they're committed to us, but but also put put safeguards in place yes. to protect our taxpayers, right? Because it's two hundred two hundred fifty two hundred forty thousand dollars, right? And but but also we got to have good police officers on the street, right? And uh, we 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 hear the pain that you're <laughs> you're going through I, in the officers, right? I, I mean, yeah, they're working I, themselves I, to death. I, I don't right? want to, I mean, like, again, I don't want to so. be an alarmist to the town, and I want to be a realist. Well, you're real, yeah, yeah, and I don't we take need it that, that stability. way. I think it's, uh, you know, so. okay. I, that would only be my ask, is that we kind of figure out a, the best way to implement it, I, right? I and this is one time, one time only. One this time year. only. One year. Yes, one, year. Yes, one year. This uh, is not a recurring yeah. expense. No, sir. And we've gotten the money basically say from, I certainly hope, if we're down that many officers, we've got the money, correct, Mr. Manager? Yes, yes, money's currently in their budget to afford to, to do this incentive as it's, as it's laid out here on page 204. Gotcha, okay, sorry. So the biggest, the, the reason for this is obviously to retain officers that we currently have, Re, reward them for their loyalty to our agency. Uh, and their hard work, of course, but also provides you some time to, to get your staff built back up, correct? I think that's the most important thing. Uh, because, again. So, so you, what I'm saying, and you said it yourself, stability is yes. where you need to be. And the incentive sign-on bonus, however you want to refer to that, incentive, hiring incentive will allow you to give a little bit of leeway for a fully, you said fully trained? Yes, sir. Certified, I think, officer and keep the current officers hopefully intact and yeah. maintain our yeah. streets. Without a doubt, one of the, the greatest pressures that we're putting on officers now is we just don't have enough of them out there. So we're working a lot of overtime. So to be able to use this $5,000 sign-on bonus, we will attract more officers right. quickly and it'll take the pressure off the officers which will work together. Well, they're working tirelessly every day and I appreciate it because crime rates down just a couple months ago 
Manager Scott stated that, and I think we discussed that ourselves yeah. here. Uh, they're doing a heck of a job with, they're doing a lot more with less, you know, every day, unfortunately. I'm very proud of them. And uh, we are too. We're very thankful. So hopefully this will uh, build some, or give you time to, to get a stable agency and, and get this where we need to be. So, uh, okay. So let me ask my question then. I think this is great for this year, but next year we have to do something. You can't go back to where you were or else you'll be back where you were. So this has to be, you have to have something that you can't, you can't put a Band-Aid on something. And this feels a lot like a Band-Aid to me. I mean, I understand it's a needed Band-Aid. We're bleeding. So you got to something to stop the bleed. I understand it. But let's don't call it something that's not. It's a Band-Aid to stop the bleeding. It's not a long-time long -time sustainability thing. We have to find a way to heal the wound so it don't keep bleeding. Yes, sir. And uh, I don't see has this, I think, that, you know, this is a, I understand the, the purpose why I know we have the money to do it. But next year, if we don't, I mean, next year then, they needed the funds to show that they needed to stay because other towns and people were recruiting them away, and now they don't get those funds. We're back exactly in the same spot we were last year. We may have more people because we have done a hiring now with the money we have now, but next year, if we don't go back, if we don't do something to continue the, the, the you know, work then where are we at so so my, my I guess my concern is I, I don't have necessarily have a problem with with the plan initially but I think it falls short in fixing the problem it solves an issue that we have today temporarily but at best it's a temporary fix and we have to have a longer term solution so that we don't have this problem in the future and I don't know I don't see the 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 one year thing as being the solution, it's a it's a fix. Like I said, it's a it's a put a finger in the dike type thing, but it's not a long term solution. So I don't know how to answer that. Uh, you know, because but you see my point. I mean, I think because uh, you I would say one your, year and then the money's gone. I see your point. And do we come up with another two hundred fifty thousand dollars added to our regular budget? And is that going to be enough? Because now we got more employees than we had before. Hopefully. And so if we try to keep that incentive going, now you're looking at more three hundred or three hundred fifty thousand dollars more, plus whatever salary increase that you have to do. Because as you said, the pressure is on to continue to increase that salary. They're fighting back and forth for these. Very valuable people, yes, sir. and you know I understand all that. So uh, how do we find what? I don't know. We have an answer to that. I don't, don't think you have an answer to that. Because, <laughs> but 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 how do we? We have to address it. My point being, we can't just. I agree, and I think the the one of the first things you'll say is I'm standing here. The town has saw that they, we need a new leadership. We needed to re-energize our department, and I'm here. And I think that we're headed in the right direction. We're bringing back employees that have left, and now we're excited about coming back to the town of Smithfield. We have a good police department. We have a good core to build on. We do have to stay competitive, and we do have to stay competent with our salaries. And I think we'll work on that with our next budget cycle as that comes. But today, and I think everybody's touched on it, is what this department needs is the stability that this will buy us to give us that year to build to get where we need to be. And we'll work through the budget cycle to stay competitive. And I think through leadership um, and being more progressive in and, and the way that we're going to run our department, we're going to not have as many bosses, we're going to have more people on the street. I think all that is going to re-energize our officers that want to stay here and they can see our career. For so long, you came to Smithfield and you could be a police officer. That was it, a road patrol officer. We need to, like, they need to be able to see a career here at the Smithfield Police Department. And that's what this will enable us to do, so we can expand some of our detectives' divisions and get back to let officers have a career here. And I think that will help keep our retention. And you kind of touched what I was going to say. I think leadership is a big, is a big part of that. I, I would, as a manager with my company, exit interviews is not always, always about money. It can be about leadership. It can be about overworking. Uh, lack of support from upper management. In this case, it could be the town staff, management, council, so on. 
Uh, I'm just saying there's various reasons. It's not always about money. Uh, and some of it will be about money, sure. But if you're going to find those short-termers, right? They're going to be here a year or two years and move off to each one. But again, what you said, building a career and stability. Uh, in some, I think in most cases, is more important than than just skipping for, you know, three thousand dollars more a year, or whatever it may be. I'm just using that as a round number. So I think that's when we got to put our faith in in you to manage the department and to keep people excited about coming back, like you said, and so on. So uh, again, like I said, you'll lose some with, with money, but I would probably dare to say it's not all. Exit interviews are not all about money. And you probably can attest to that in, yes, in your years of experience as, as a leader. Yes, sir. They, they need to feel supported. And exactly. I think, that's, I think that's what we're sending. So, uh, so I hope we do our job in doing that. And if we're not, you need to let us know so Thank we you, can sir. support you and do what we need to, to help you. And as force the officers in the, in the street and the officers in the entire agency. So. Mm -hmm. You've been an officer for 20 years or more in North Carolina? Almost 30. So 20 years ago, if you were 55 and approaching retirement or whatever, mm -hmm. um, was the state support for medical insurance and that kind of thing, mm -hmm. um, and even for pension type benefits, far better than it floor. is now? <laughs> you know, are we having trouble with our mature officers because the benefits have been cut back on the state level? I can tell you that um, the town managers have start, started to address that. I know he's brought that up. And for two of our applicants, they've already asked about the insurance, the lifelong insurance would come. But, yeah, that was a huge part uh, that, that kept you in the service because you knew that that was there. And if you could get to it, then you were set once you were retired. So it is an um, incentive to stay. In North Carolina, it's much easier to go from department to department because they all pretty much carry the same insurance. So keeps you in law enforcement, but it may not keep you at the same department. That makes if that answers your question. Mayor, I have a few comments I'd like to make. Um, Chief, thank you for bringing this before council tonight. Um, I, perhaps I see this a little different. Um, I see the hiring incentive, and I see that as an effort to recruit people to come work here. And then I understand retention means people to stay, and I appreciate what you guys do. But that's only fair if not a man could resign and come under this new program. My point is um, we've been through COVID. We've been through a lot of things. And there was even federal money that come here. We did do a pay analysis, and we... I think we met the bar, but I think that's changed. But we don't, I don't recall us ever rewarding any hazard pay or anything for the guys. And what I do know is there's times that those people have answered calls. They shouldn't answer by themselves. And we preach that we care about our employees, and we, we, we must take care of our employees. Um, I don't totally understand the program, and I do have some concerns in regards to the payments um, considering that staff is on a biweekly payment, I don't think that they, we should work that out to make it convenient for them and make it where it, like the mayor said, it protects the, the interest of the program. But you say that this is only for, I would assume, through this physical year. I would think that we would need to carry the hiring incentive further unless you think you can get fully staffed in a matter of six months. So that may be hard. But I say all that to say um, I am extremely grateful for what the staff does. I have one concern. I understand what a sworn law enforcement officer is. That's a person that takes the oath and then goes out there and enforces the law. But we have many other civilian positions in this town. And for it to be equal, those people shouldn't be left out. Um, I'm assuming we're talking about clerical positions and such as that. Is that correct? 
Two of the positions are clerical workers, and one of them is a civilian manager. She's also in charge of our evidence section, and she's also in charge of our CALEA accreditation. And she's the supervisor of the two civilian employees. And then we have our animal control officer. Is that a sworn position? No, he is not. Okay. He doesn't have arrest powers, but he, he's our... Is the accreditation officer the one you're referring to that's the uh, civilian? That's, yes. That's over, that's the supervisor? Yes. Chief, what is your timeline for implementing this program? Uh, again, talking with the town manager, if the funds were there, um, of course we don't want to rush into it, and I had fully intended on working with our finance uh, director to develop a plan to make sure that we're safeguards and we're good stewards of the money. I don't envision coming and giving anybody a handful of money and saying, look, the town loves you and we want you to stay. There have to be safeguards in place to make sure that we get what we want, which is to retain our employees. So I think that we can see that coming, but I would like to see it probably by the new year. Hey, um, a um, couple comments. Um, my opinion is money's been allocated. It's no extra cost. I mean, it's just going to make us look better on fund balance if we do nothing. That's just on paper. Um, this could be put to use. Um, thinking of the safeguard, just in hearing you talk, instead of doing it, and then we might not be able to do this, could we spread it out where they, where they see that over the, is it how many pay cycles it is, spread it over to pay cycles versus saying here, here's a check. Oh, I got my check, uh, I'm gonna go to Four Oaks now. Um, that way to better safeguard us where they see that weekly or bi-weekly, whatever our pay schedule is versus saying, here's your check, <clears throat> thank you. Um, please don't leave us. <laughs> I think. I don't, I don't know, I'm thinking out loud here, but. I think uh, before we finalize anything, probably need to get that, uh, the agreement in place and refined, but concern I have, and I like the idea of doing it more frequently. That way, yeah. if somebody leaves, you don't get hung out on it because it may not be cost effective to get it back. But if you start paying somebody every two weeks, well, then they, they used, can make the argument that it's part of their salary. Right, and then people no get used to the cost. Call it, and then and we give them, a, and they see it as a decrease and next it's year. Drop. You're right, right, right. Well, yeah. So by doing it in a lump sum, I think it. True. True separates it and everybody realizes what it truly is. So. Well, if you give somebody, I mean, especially doing it that way, we'll be giving somebody a raise and then giving them a, a decrease and nobody wants to do that. Yes. So, I, I mean, I'm just thinking out loud here. I, only thing I would say, I have found that uh, bonuses like that are, that are paid are taxed at a lot higher rate and so you don't get as much as you think you get. And then people say, well, it's going to get back when you get, turn your taxes in. And it seems like it never happened for me that way. But uh, uh, so, uh, you know, I mean, I'm sure we've all had that experience. Uh, whereas if it's paid all in smaller payments, it, the taxes are not, it, it absorbs it in a lot smaller way. They don't penalize you as much with those big bonuses. I mean, I've seen, you know, state gives us a bonus, a check, we got half of it, was all of a sudden done because they say, well, it was taxed at a higher rate. Well, why? You know, but well, you get it back on your taxes, right? It doesn't happen. So I'm saying that's also a factor because yes. you say you don't get $7,500 and they will only get $3,500 because taxes take out of it because they got, it's a bonus count and bonus counts at a higher rate. Is that my right or wrong, sir? You're the finance guy. Tax bonuses, don't they usually get a higher rate tax? Yeah, they'd be taxed at about whatever the rate is at 100000 So you see, I yes, mean, sir. that's a big impact. Oh, I, Whether you tax at a lower rate because they're not going to pay that you know, unless you can tell, unless you can count, unless you got enough, uh, uh, unless you got enough deductibles to do a, a you know, a thing, you're never going to get that money back. I you believe, just get the, the, yeah. the same thing you got if you didn't pay anything. I that. believe working with, with the finance director and the okay. account manager would be able to get to the point where you it's see, I mean, beneficial to everybody. Yeah, yes. I understand what he's saying, yes, too, because people, it's a bigger impact to people see. Yes. But then again, you don't want to lose the money and they get the government get it. It doesn't solve the problem, does it? Yes, sir. On paper, it looks like you got it, but in reality, you didn't ever get it. Yes, sir. Not the year end. So, Chief, just uh, another question while we're while we're waiting here. I've just so this table on page two hundred four is this the list of the current positions that are that are. 
that potentially could we get paid? This? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. So help we, me out. As you've got a BLT, BLET at five thousand dollars and a BLET at two thousand dollars. Is that a part-time person that's going through BLET? Why is there a difference there? I believe that's just a, a clerical error. A okay. BLET should be two thousand. BLET should yeah, be. Yeah. So 2, that's 000. a person in basic law enforcement training. Okay. I was like, I'm, I was kind of confused that's there currently hired, why we would be paying someone $5,000 to, you must have a really, really good candidate. Okay. We have some great candidates, but not that. Okay. Any other questions, comments, thoughts? I have yes. another question. Um, it was touched on about the health insurance, and we, we've discussed that, but there's been no action on that. Um, is my hope that we can meet as a group and discuss some of these concepts, much like this. However, that hasn't happened. Um, I, I'll make a motion that we approve the concept and that we support this, but I'd like for you to bring back a plan to address some of the concerns that have been presented. Perhaps we could further discuss it in a workshop, um, but I'll let the motion stand. So I'm not sure if this is the proper way to do it, but I, I can tell you from the people of the police department, if we get an approval tonight that just says, yes, we're going to do it, they're willing, they understand that paperwork has to be, but I think what they want to hear from the council tonight is that you support them. And then I think they're more than willing to, to work it out so it's beneficial to everybody else. I don't want to overstep my bounds for saying, but it's pivotal to my employees tonight that they understand that, that that's what their approval is. Mayor, I'll change my motion. I'll make a motion we approve this plan and let the manager and the police chief and his administration figure out the details. I think we can trust him to do that, as he just said. Yeah, it needs to be done. Second. Second. So we have a motion to approve it and then allow the manager to work out the details. But I guess so for discussion purposes, are, are we in agreement that it should not be paid in, in two installments? Say that again. Are we in agreement, based on some of the comments I've heard, I'm asking, are we in agreement that it should not be paid in the two installments? It ought to be paid more frequently. Maybe not every paycheck. Maybe, Maybe quarterly, every quarterly or something. Well, whatever the manager and the chief figures out, but I do think that is a concern. Okay. Yeah, I, I, would, I would like to see it personally quarterly, but whatever is best fit for you. So when we amend the motion, you know, I would go ahead and do support that. that. But then it's not quite as passed on the tax purposes of it. I don't know. It's what doctor. Yeah, that's why he's a doctor, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> that's what I would say. That's and again, I would that. say that it would understanding him to. I, I think understanding, and this is I'm, you know the, the, we already have a first and a second. I know, but I think the uh, the 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 let me kind of clarify my view of the of the of the the motion was that we we that that Mr. Scott here is trusting the manager and the finance manager and the chief to work out what is best, understanding our needs, our concerns, to work out the best solution you, to impact the best for the, the town and for the, the police officer. Is that, am I, am I correct? Am I stating that right? Yes. That's what, and so, I, you know, so that's what I thought. When you say quarterly, I assume. And that way we, get, instead of coming back to us to do it again, they can handle it. Councilman Scott, left. would you be willing to yeah, amend yours to say you paid on a quarterly, quarterly basis the six and then contingent on not well, the contract the, that the council whatever you understand term that the manager will come up yeah, with? Yeah, let's see what Mike says. He probably got some thoughts year, on it. Right? Yeah. This retention is just for one year <laughs> employment. Is that correct? So how's that even going to work? So, so that that just raises another question. It's got to be paid out before. So, so change. fiscal. So we said it's. Is it, are we talking one calendar year? Or are we talking one budget year? Because we only have six months left in the budget yeah. year. I think it was a calendar year, right? 
Well, uh, I'm talking with the manager right here on the sidebar, and I don't think that's what he's understanding. So, I think the intent of this was to have this completed and this money spent by the end of this fiscal year. Because it is for this budget. Mm. So that's when you so say quarterly, yeah. I assume you mean dividing the last seven months up into quarters, yeah, not dividing the year up into quarters, because we've only got seven months it's left. It's just four payments. Yeah, four payments of the, in the, within the next seven months. In this budget cycle. Okay, Is that what you guys were understanding? or No, but no, that's, I, that I thought it was going to be rolling over. Yeah. Yeah. I was on an impression it was being used by the end of the budget. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's on board. And, and Bob brings up a good point. Um, I understand they're going to – I understand what you said, Dr. Barber, that you never get your money back at the end of the year when you th they say they're going to. But in the end, you've got – you know, your tax form comes in and it's your annual income. Whether they get paid one time or, or four times, they're going to end up – I really don't see it as a tax issue. The issue is if you want to have some type of clawback or, or security of the money so that we don't – um, you know, have someone take the lump sum and run. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that's yeah. what I'm hearing. Uh, and I think that, that that's true. And, but if it's, the payments are going to be within the, potentially within the budget cycle, but they still have to work one year at a minimum. You mean as far as a contract? Yes, yes. contract, as which we don't have the contract yet, which is what you were referring to. Yeah, this is I think it's important I know, to I mean, I know we've got a motion a second, but, I mean, you know, it's Andy, kind of... Andy, if you just pay them monthly, okay, uh, this particular bonus for the period of time left, seven months, um, then you have some protection on somebody disappearing. Sure. I mean, and, and to claw it back is going to be, like John said, it's, it's too expensive. Yeah. I mean, it's when you can just pay them monthly. And, and it, it has no effect on their taxes because they're going to be at the same adjusted gross income, however you pay it monthly or buy it. Right, John? Mm -hmm. If you pay it monthly, it's cheaper and it solves the other problem. I don't have a problem with paying it monthly. But anyway. Well, just right, I just want to make sure everybody understands that, though, right? Is that it, it's we are talking paying within this budget year. I don't know that we necessarily have to, though. I mean, just because the money's for this budget, we can carry it over to the next budget. Well, that's why I thought we were talking yeah, about you know, rolling. Can't we, Mr. Mayor? That's why I asked the question was rolling 12 just months. It's in this budget. I so thought it was. You can't carry the money over. You can carry the money over, or you can just a create a budget for yeah. them next year. I mean, it's the same thing. Money's, Money's still there. We pull it. To yeah, me, that's easier. Budget next yeah, year. Yeah, I think that's budget. easier. It's, it keeps everything. Well, whatever you want to do. They have to work that amount of time, just and you pay them within sorry, not quick. a budget year, but a calendar year. So. Yeah, if, yeah, if that's what good. the council wants to do, I think that takes away from what what Pete was trying to accomplish. How? He wants stability. And they have to be here a year. So, does it? I mean, I, I'm asking. I, I mean, I don't know how to I mean, take how, how that. dollars over a period of 12 months isn't that much money. Yeah. And I'm concerned that you're trying to retain me. people and you're trying to thank them <laughs> for that. Yeah. I, I'm yeah. just telling you, it isn't over a period of 12 months. Uh, it's, it's $7 an hour. Well, actually, it's not even seven dollars. Three dollars, like three dollars and fifty cents an hour. That's seventy-five hundred dollars. I think it's seven seven dollars and ten but cents for the I remainder. Can, of the I can I can appreciate the council's and and some of this is because you can see that I am not a finance director, and it, I was the idea man behind this, and I appreciate the thought that it's going to. But I want you to understand is the officers that are sitting here, they appreciate what you guys are doing. They appreciate that you're willing to meet them, and we can we can finesse this to get what we need, but ultimately what, what they want is to know that council supports them, and I'm really excited that they do. And what I want as a new chief is to make sure that we have that stability. So I don't want to overstep myself and say go from a, a, you know, one financial year to another. You're fine. But I would like to be able to say, look, uh, the first payment starts at this year and the other one comes at the end of the year, so I make sure that people are incentivized to stay here during that time while we transition and build at the police department. Okay. So we do it, I mean, and that's fine. Hey, and I get so. I mean, I do have a motion, and I do have a, a second. second. Any any further discussion on it? Can we? Because uh, it was to to allow the manager to, to work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My motion is to approve the as 
as written yeah. uh, and let the manager and the police chief and their admin figure out the, the logistics behind how to fund it and pay it. I do think the intention was this physical year, though. I, I, yeah. The manager told me that. I, I was under the impression it was over a 12 month and we would just roll the money over into the contingency fund and move that money back as we needed it. I don't see why there's a difference. For the there. police department. Yeah. They still keep their budget. I, I think for the, for the bank for I mean, you. That's what I thought. Yep. It was for 12 months. So maybe I'm. I, I bowed it to, to my boss, and I, I know as the ex chief here, he's going to do the right thing to get me where I need to be. So I'm confident in his ability. I don't even do it's fine. The money's there. So okay. either way you roll it over, you pay it, the money's there. Yes, sir. However, y'all deem, and you know your department better than I do. Paid as long right? As they so you know what your needs are. required to work a year and have to pay it. Mm -hmm. I mean, Can we call a question? Yep. Absolutely, sir. All right, motion and a second. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Uh, Any opposed? Carries. Thank you, Chief. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Now, bring on the audio. You kept on talking about it. <laughs> All right, we'll move on to our um, next business item, consideration and request for approval to accept the system development fees. Gentlemen, again, I'll thank you for letting me come and speak this evening. The purpose of this presentation is to present the findings of EnviroLink as they have reviewed and updated the economic analysis, which is the basis for the town system development fees. As you may recall, in 2018, the town instituted our current system development fees in response to House Bill 436. House Bill 436 effectively eliminated so-called impact fees, but allowed municipalities uh, to create the system development fee. The purpose of that fee is to pay for system upgrades, improvements, and expansions that utilities make to accommodate growth and development. These one-time fees are paid by the development so that new growth pays for such improvements and not the existing customer. House Bill 436, Section 209C stipulates that the analysis of those, uh, the economic analysis used as the basis for those fees be reviewed so the fees are updated at least every five years. So the process of review we go through is to initially present the report findings to the council. Then we will post the report <clears throat> and the analysis on the town website for a period of no less than 45 days to invite public comment. After that period, we'll hold a public meeting to discuss any input that the public may have, um, and staff recommends that this occur at the January council meeting. Council may at that meeting set the fees to be at any level up to the maximum level as recommended by the analysis. So just as in 2018, the consultant chose to use a calculation methodology that uses both a buy-in asset valuation and incremental asset valuation to calculate the maximum possible fee. This method produced a maximum number the town may set the fee at. As this analysis began prior to the latest sewer agreement with the county, that fee was not incorporated into the analysis. So the consultant did address this by recommending the town add a line below the system development fee table that we incorporate uh, into the budget that states the town will also include uh, the county fee as a pass-through charge. So this is the current table listed in the existing fee schedule. And this is the proposed table. Please note the total increase of the fee is roughly, roughly double the existing fee. Also, we will include the statement 
uh, to include the county sewer capacity fee if adopted. Regardless of where the council decides to set this fee in, in 45 days or more, staff strongly encourages the statement concerning the county charge be added to cover the cost of that capacity purchase. As mentioned, the council now has been presented the results of the analysis. Staff will post the analysis and recommend findings on the, and the recommended findings on the town website to invite public comment. And we will schedule a public hearing to consider the adopting uh, the revised fees with any modifications or revisions. So thank you for your time. I'd be happy to discuss. Again, staff is not asking for any action this evening. All you had to do was be presented the results this evening. Any questions though? Any for Ted while he's here? I, Mayor, I have a couple of comments. Ms. Crater, thank you for bringing this before us and uh, we've discussed this. But tonight we heard about a <coughs> subdivision that was developed by a developer and now they're in here fussing us because they don't got no water pressure. And I shop frequently at Lowe's over there and they sell three quarter inch water line. Why would we even have a five eight inch water line option on here? Because you know what the devil's gonna do, they're gonna take the cheap option. Am I right or wrong? That you're right if, unless we tell them not to, you're correct. They'll Let's eliminate that five eight inch. Because I guarantee you those taps out there were bought at the cheap one and that's where the pinch point is. They have the pressure, but they don't have the volume. Their concern is pressure, not volume. Well, the static pressure you said is 40 to cut it on and they can't even flush the toilet and wash their hands is what they said. Right, that's, and that's a pressure that's pretty issue. Sure. Not well, sure. it, size of the pipe. it's volume. I mean, it's a restriction somewhere. I, I don't know, I'm not a plumber. I what you're saying though. But well, well, I think that- That might have to do with valving. The five eighth inch should not even, I don't even, I don't know the building code, but I know that when these developers come in here, they want the cheapest path and the residents are the ones going to suffer, the people that buy those houses later. Why would we even have that on our book? I'm just saying. That's all. Okay. Well, we, the council could certainly uh, remove that. That's not, a, that's, that's not a, uh, an issue. You guys certainly have the ability to do that if you want. Can't, now, to, to his point, though, when you do the event, can you tell us when you get a chance can you go to Bell Square and see what type of pipes they've got? That would be very interesting to know if that might be the problem, that they got pressure but not enough volume, so therefore when they're trying to spread the pressure out, they don't have enough volume when you turn on stuff to, it don't matter if you have a, I mean, what do you got, a little spit stream? I mean, you know. Well, let, let keep, me keep, keep, in, <coughs> keep, in, keep in mind that Bell Square was built out 20 years ago. Uh -huh. Okay, so all those pipes and everything over there have been sitting there that long. So figuring, without digging them up and seeing what we got, it's a little bit difficult. But um, that, that whole system over there was not built, you know, while Stephen was in planning and, and got all the approvals and, and all the inspections done. All that stuff was done years ago. But don't we have the documentation out. on that? Wouldn't we I, not still have it? Sure. I just can't see why we, we could ever run a five eight inch water but line. But we, we can residents. look at what's connected. Yeah, Certainly, we know what's connected to the water meters and those types. Councilman of Scott, uh -huh. you could use a five eight, uh, for example, on an irrigation meter. But this is an option for the residents, right? Right, it's an option. Correct. And again, we could always say to any developer, "You're not allowed to use that. You have to use three quarter inches." Well, what's the what is causing water pressure problems in, in West Mayfield and Delaware? You, you can't put a tank all over it, right? Rod, you be. Uh, what, what? Yeah, as far as system development fees are concerned, <laughs> this has nothing to do with that. Uh, if we want to have a discussion on, on pressure, we can do that. Uh, okay, well, if, yeah. if system development fees, are you going to add, is, is a town capital cost that will be included on top of the county capital cost for sewer? Correct. Pressure. Correct. The town, the, the towns, uh, every January or every other January, the council approves that uh, capital improvement plan. That was used as part of their their analysis. So there's all kinds of projects, big and small, in there. So the, um, fee, the fee is better for us than just pass it to the county because we pick up some of the money. Yeah. Right. Well, the system, to, this table, <coughs> that's ours. That's 100% ours. And the, the pass-through charge of that sewer capacity fee, which we had the long, very long and, and, and now settled, um, 
we have we decided at that time that it's just a pass-through charge. If you wish to add on to that, that's another discussion. How do these uh, relate to what the county charges for their? Again, ours is smaller because our assets are less. It's a valuation. They charge more for a water tap fee that's right. a quarter inch. Yes, they do. And, well, same and also their, their capital plans are much larger than ours. I mean, everything used for valuation. You know, we're Smithfield and they're the county, so. I'm not ready. <coughs> this is not a decision we got to make tonight. That's correct. No, there, yeah, no action is, is yeah, requested I mean, or required this evening, none. I mean, In fact, we have to post it for 45 days by law before we can take any action at all. So that's why I, I would request in January we, at, that, at that council meeting we then have a public hearing about the whole matter. Any other questions for Ted at this time? No? Okay. All right. We'll move on then. Thank, Thank you, you gentlemen. All right. We'll move on then to community development block grant update. Mike. Mayor and Council, thanks for having me this evening to talk about CDBG update. Um, you might recall this whole thing was approved in December 20th of 2019. So we're talking about a considerable amount of time ago when this grant started. The grant uh, started out at $750,000, and that's where it remained throughout the grant period. The grant was for housing rehabilitation for home code violations only. Okay, so the whole project here was about owner-occupied homes, fixing them up to meet code. Rental property was not accepted. People had to actually own their homes and live in their homes in order to be able to apply for this grant. The way it worked is that we added mortgage, with, and, and Bob assisted us with this, um, where they had seven to 10 year forgivable loans depending on the value of their repairs. Uh, so uh, a house that wasn't in need of a ton of repairs would get a seven year mortgage attached to it and it would be forgiven one seventh every year for seven years until after seven years that the loan was forgiven in, in its entirety. So, People who participate in this didn't have to pay a dime in order to get these houses fixed. They just have to live in them. The original target area was kind of this triangle here with Martin Luther King Jr. Drive on one side, Brogdon Road on the other, and Rand Street on the far side. We picked that area primarily because we had to have low to moderate income homes in order to make the grant and we looked at some of our crime analysis and said this is an area where we have significant crime uh, as compared to some of the other areas of the community and we hoped that by bringing in rehabbing homes that it was going to improve the neighborhoods and therefore spur additional growth, positive growth in those areas, which we all know cuts back on crime. Right now, well, let me back up just a second. We started out with 22 applications in that, in that uh, location that we had. Um, let me back up just a second. Yeah. Um, that triangle area between Brogdon Road, Martin Luther King Jr., and Rand Street, we had 22 applications. We went through the applications. By the time we got through the process, two people had been deceased, so they were not, no longer eligible. Eight homeowners decided not to participate, 
primarily because they were concerned about the seven or 10 years that they would have to remain in the home um, without uh, having to pay back the loan. So if someone is in this process and they only they have a seven year loan and for some reason they become deceased at five years, the people who inherit that house is on the hook for that additional two year mortgage and they have to pay that back. So they can sell the home and pay it back or they can just pay off the loan. But they were, there was people concerned about that. So that scared some people off. Um, we had uh, one homeowner moved out, uh, moved to another location, and uh, that left 11 homes. Of the 11 homes, we had that $750,000. Well, it's like a puzzle without the, without the front of the box. You gotta figure out how to spend the $750,000 in these 11 homes and fix the things that need to be fixed. So when it all boiled down to it, we felt we only had enough money to fix 10 of these homes, not 11. So one person was left out just because of lack of funding. So we had 10 homes, we rehabbed eight of them. One of them after the rehab, no fault of the rehab, caught fire with an electrical issue and burned down. So, or, or got to a point where it was not rebuildable. So that left us with nine homes that we were re totally rehabbed in, in this uh, process. Seven of those nine are done, totally done. Everything is complete. We have two homes left and those are complete reconstructions. That means the homes were torn down, the foundation was torn down. The only thing that was left was the lot, the dirt, and then we rebuilt the, both of those homes. One's at 714 East Street, and this is a, a, a rebuild um, picture from about a month ago. Now, if you go over there, you'll see siding on the house. The walls inside are up. They're finishing the floors and the, painting the walls, and we anticipate that we'll be done um, before the end of the year, maybe uh, sometime in December before Christmas. 907 Second Avenue is the second rebuild, and again, this is about a picture is from last month. Um, if you go over there now, you'll see siding, the windows are in, uh, the doors are in, the interior is just about done, the kitchen's in, the bathrooms are in, um, and they've, most of the inspections are done. Mm -hmm. Other homes that we worked on was 800 Blunt Street. Um, we did mostly interior work on this house as well as some deck work in the back. Uh, 802 Blunt Street, um, new siding, new roof, uh, new air conditioning unit for this home as well as some interior work. Uh, 812 Blunt Street, again, uh, roofing work and interior work on this house. Uh, 921 Blunt Street, um, roofing work and mo primarily interior work on this and uh, air conditioning work. 908 Rand Street, this house had all new siding, all new windows, all new roof, a uh, new porch, and again, some work on the inside. 1715 East Street, uh, predominantly work on the inside of this home and air conditioning work. 915 East Street, um, this house had windows um, and considerable amount of work on the inside, including uh, floor work. Here are some, some pictures of some of the items replaced. So brand new air conditioning units. These included the air conditioning units, stands if they were needed, and all of the work underneath the house uh, for the ventilation replaced. Um, this house, uh, siding, roof, windows, new air conditioning unit. Uh, again, new deck on this house as well as new windows, roof, and siding. Um, here's a picture of one of the kitchens that was replaced inside the house, the whole thing taken out, all new cabinets, um, new flooring, um, new sinks, uh, and, and appliances as well in some of these homes. Um, here's one with a refrigerator and stove, new flooring, um, new cabinets, all installed as part of the kitchen, as well as the window there. Here's bathroom that was replaced, 
Again, new flooring, new vanity, new stool, uh, new shower, tub shower. Um, another shower example that was replaced, tub shower in one of the bathrooms in one of the homes. A new vanity in that, new flooring as well, new, new uh, the walls all redone, and new trim work. Uh, this is a home where new, the flooring was replaced. This floor had a, a big dip in it. We had a really tough time with it, but we were able to work out the dip and replace all the flooring in, the, in, this, in this room in this house. This is another picture of some brand new flooring uh, that was done in one of the homes, um, as well as the windows. So this project while it nears an end, um, has been a considerable challenge. You heard from Amazon tonight about macroeconomic problems they've had. Well, we suffered about every kind of problem you could have with, with rehab in these homes. We had contractor problems, lack of contractors, supply chain issues, getting things in. We had um, Johnson Lee Harnett when we started this, you might remember, partnered with us to help us inspect these homes and create what they call the write-ups on each home, what needs to be fixed in every single home, and then come in once it's fixed and say, yes, it's good. Um, they, they, they bowed out from us almost immediately. They, they checked two houses for us and, and left us. Um, their employee left them. They couldn't hire another one. Uh, and we were left to try to find ways to manage this ourselves or just say it's too much for us and give all the money back and these people weren't going to get their, their homes fixed. So the administrator that we hired to do this took on a lot of additional responsibility and a lot of additional work to get this stuff done and, and get it approved. And I can back in our, our uh, uh, file room, we've got five what are milk crates full of files just for this grant. They stand about this tall, and they have been reviewed by uh, CDBG and the Rural Economic Development Division multiple times. We had our last file review just about two weeks ago, um, and you know that work is just very tedious, very time-consuming to deal with these grants, and very proud that we were able to get through all of that and help these people out. As a result, we are seeing exactly what we hoped we would see. If you drive over to these areas, there are new homes being built next to these homes on empty lots. Uh, lots are being sold, sometimes up to $40,000 a lot um, for building in, in infill homes in these areas. So uh, we're seeing everything improve, and you know, we're happy to be a part of that. Uh, with that, I'll be glad to answer any questions you might have. Any questions for, for Mike? We anticipate closing this grant out by Christmas time, and uh, th it'll be complete. So this will be your last, <coughs> last update. The pictures look good. Yeah. They, they look really good. Yeah. It's, you, it, it's remarkable the work that's been done under the circumstances. And, and the homeowners are happy. They're very pleased with what's going on. Some of them had to be inconvenienced for quite a while because they had to be moved out of their homes. And we paid for that too. But it's, it's, you know, it's not without some sacrifice for them too. That's good. Now, the ones that are getting the new homes, right? Yes. Where, where are they living? Uh, we... One of them moved in with family. Okay. The other one we've, we've put up in a bed and breakfast, uh, <laughs> Airbnb basically, mm -hmm. for the duration. We had to move them recently because the lease came due. We didn't think it was going to be quite this long. So we had to move them out uh, just for like three days and then move them back in to that place because they rented it out to somebody else. Nice. For that short period of time, so they were a little inconvenienced that way. But, but CDBG has paid for them to to live in these, and we've paid for pods to put all their stuff in. And uh, so the one house um, on East Street that we're hoping to have the pods over there this weekend, so that they can start moving stuff in. Good. Okay. 
Thank you, sir. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate it. Okay. Move on now to consideration and request for approval to enter into an agreement with NCDOT for the CMAC CRP funding, the West Market Street Trail project. Okay. Stephen? Yes, sir. We're going to have to spend some money on this room. <laughs> We're getting bigger. <laughs> okay, you're in console. Um, this is the agreement with NCDOT to accept the CMAC CRP funding for the West Market Street Trail Project. So just as a reminder, um, this is the trail that would go from the West Market Street um, Noose River Bridge, follow the north side of Market Street to Wilson's Mills Road. There is anticipation that there will possibly, possibly need uh, some right-of-way as we get closer to Wilson's Mills Road, roughly from where NC210 intersects with Market Street. The right-of-way gets a little narrower as opposed to, uh, to the east of there. So there would be some right-of-way work also. Staff anticipates um, hiring, there'll be an environmental, some kind of a, a contract with an environmental firm to get through all those <coughs> approvals. And then there would also be a general contractor um, hired to manage the grant construction. And what questions do you have? Halfway there, man. I think it's important the council realize that this is this grant is is a bigger monster than the town staff can handle. Definitely. We we are not we don't have the expertise to be able to buy right of way and to, to figure these things out and how this should be done. So hiring a firm to assist with this is going to be required if we're going to move forward with this. So that would be additional funding? Additional cost. Hmm. Have any idea what that would be? No. Do you? Uh, no. Um, I, the pre-engineering work is included in the grant amount, so we, we can use the grant to the, do the pre-engineering. For the engineering for yeah. the project, but not for right-of-way purchases and, and right-of-way. Correct. Yeah. Negotiating. Correct. Mm -hmm. It says it includes right away acquisition. The purchase of. I think it's talking about anticipating purchase, but not oh. necessarily the negotiation and the process. How much would you charge us, Bob? It's interesting. <laughs> You're basically asking somebody to uh, negotiate the purchase price of the right way. Yeah. I don't mind looking at that. We don't get it. How the damn it? Do you the purchase well, no, because you'll just call my office and say, can you do this for me? <laughs> <laughs> so, so um, you could do, can you do eminent domain? Sure. And just have to pay whatever the price for that would be, whatever the going it, price. It, if it comes to that. Yeah, right. I understand. You hope it doesn't have to come. No, but it, it, benefits, it benefits everybody in the West Smithfield district over there on that, that part from there to be able to get your people to town. I mean, that's important, uh, especially pedestrian, bicycles, because it's a multi-purpose path, right? So it's better than just a sidewalk because it's a multi-purpose path so that people can get. If you can, if the kids can risk their lives crossing over Wilson Mills Road, <laughs> they'll be safe. Mayor, uh, questions I have is, Where's this money, the 468000 going to come from? Mm. You're recommending coming from the Bingham Park? I'm recommending, yeah, you use the Bingham Park money and, the, and then the balance of park and loo funds to pay for it. So restricted funds from Bingham Park? And, and park and loo. There's about $350,000 um, in Bingham Park 
And uh, Park and Lou, we got about 250000 there. But how's that going to affect the capital improvement plans that we've got for the parks? I mean, well, right now it, it won't because we don't have that revenue earmarked for any of those. I understand the concept. I just two million dollars for. I mean, it gets you there part of the way, like you said. But what, what's the surface going to be? Is it going to be gravel, stone, the trail surface? Uh, likely bituminous, bituminous or concrete. Concrete, much like a sidewalk then. Yeah, it's eight feet wide is what we're anticipating. What the surface will be determined based on cost, I would assume. So are we restricted later if we want to call it a bike lane? People ride their bike on it? Well, it's multi-purpose, so I don't think there's any restrictions. Is this going to tack into the Mountain Sea Trail? Mm -hmm. And the concrete surface will be continuous, or whatever the surface is. It, like where those gravel lots are there, they'll have a concrete strip through the gravel. Um, that would be, yeah. I mean, there'll be a, a paved surface. In the um, right way. If there's not already bituminous there, I, I, it has to be decided. Actually, I don't have it. It's not designed. <laughs> Several of those spots through there where it's an industrial site, specifically the septic tank company, and that heavy truck crossing over that is not going to... Yeah, that would have to be designed for that kind of traffic. So I was assuming that the driveways that are there would... Um, they were not being... Because the driveways, most of the, the... A lot of the driveways are already some type of... A, um, some type of entrance because the DOT built something for them to get off of that highway onto the, the lot. <coughs> but, I mean, I would assume that they're going to have to obviously keep them open for whatever uh, entrance way they have to provide. So they'll have to, that's have to be part of that design. I'm assuming that was taken into consideration. Correct? Traffic control, yeah. yeah. I mean, they need to maintain driveways throughout the construction yeah. process. The curb and gutter that's been installed in recent landscaping, is that going to be, is it going to go behind that or? I believe there's right, looking at the uh, aerial photo, for most of the way, it looks like there's enough right of way where the trail could go behind it. Right. I mean, again, that's looking at aerial photos, but when you get up towards Wilson's Mills Road, it narrows considerably. It does, yeah. mm -hmm. The ditch. So you might have to put pipe over it. You may have to, you may have to lead the way for what's going to have to happen on the rest of Wilson Mills Road putting some pipe down and then covering it with a sidewalk. Yeah. I mean, because there's not that much, again, to the point is, there's not a lot of land extra on that corner Then when you start getting towards the, the corner of Wilson Mills Road. Because right. they cut that off to make that turn lane when they built the four lanes road, there's not a lot of property there. Um, yeah. And this is federal pass-through money, so there's lots and lots of stipulations and restrictions and requirements. So like Mike said, it, it's a lot to administer. There's a lot about it that I can't answer at this time. Um, we'd have to hire someone who could manage all those issues and questions and, and, and do the best we can trying to get as much of this built for the money we have. I mean, obviously, um, the goal is to complete it all, but we only have so much money, so we're going to figure out with costs and all the other um, aspects of it to see how far we get. Looking at the parks and master plan and the uh, mountain to sea trail, does this come into consideration in any of that? Uh, we have the PED plan. So the, with a PED plan, should DOT make, you know, a, a major street project, I'm not quite sure what the threshold is, but they have an obligation if there's a complete streets, let's say they widen or I don't know what else would trigger it, they would build the the pedestrian facility with that improvement. Again, I'm not sure what the thresholds are as to when they would have to do that, but for instance, the uh, river bridge um, down by the flea market, they are putting in the pedestrian facilities through that construction project. So in the future, DOT could build some or all of it. Town could build, continue on it in the future, Developers, when they develop, will build sections of it as they develop. 
such as with Floyd Landing and, and the sidewalk we got at uh, Amazon. And the sidewalk that we already have on Wilsonville Road from uh, Franklin Homes. Right. That's already built on so, Wilsonville Road. So just thinking, you know, in the next 10 years, are we tied to that specific route with this grant? Or if there was a better right-of-way obtained, perhaps more along the river, so to speak, to get back to West Smithfield, would that be an option? Or you, do you know, Mr. Winsor? Well, this is specifically for this route. Um, we do have on the PED plan, uh, you know, a future potential greenway trail along the river identified if there's any any way to get that to happen um, there are a couple similar you know off street routes on the ped plan but I, but i remember when we submitted this there was a reason that we decided to go on that side yes as opposed on that to side, the side of the road of the river. that's because on the south side um Right where this, where the, you can see the uh, the trees that kind of overhang the road, mm. um, right beyond those those uh, crepe myrtle trees, the grade drops off. There's just not any room to put a, a sidewalk on that mm. side. Okay. And the state grant is for the project. It doesn't matter how far we get into the project. They're going to pay, and we're going to pay our percentage. And if we get halfway through, that's what we get. Yeah, it'll be based on construction costs and how much we can achieve. So right now, we don't have any idea as far well, as construction cost goes. I mean, where did these, this number come from? This, this I mean, came from working with DOT, James Salmon, mm -hmm. who is both our, our uh, upper coastal plain RPO leader and now a DOT employee. He put together the cost estimates, as good as those are. And then uh, to Councilman Scott's question as far as the funding goes, so Mike, I know, I know, I know you've stated that the, the ARPA funds have to be used in a certain amount of time, right? They have to be spent by the end of 2026. We don't think we could get far enough along in this project to utilize the $468,000 out of ARPA funds, or? It's a five-year project. Yeah. It's a crapshoot. But I guess, I guess though, if we get into this, we could certainly bring it back if we start, if we, if we reach that, right, mm -hmm. and be able to spend that amount of money out of ARPA funds, right, if we, if we have it, if we haven't already had plans for it, instead of taking it out of the Parks and Rec fund, right? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, Questions, comments? Oh, let me just say, you know, I, I, I hate things cost so much. Everything costs so much money. But uh, one of the things that we have really, and you know I'm not saying something I haven't said all along, <clears throat> one of my biggest concerns has always been that uh, the people who live on the other side of the river, which is me, live on the other side of 210, which is me, all the people in that, which is Roger, all of us in that neighborhood, our children cannot come to town. They cannot participate in the community park. They can't do anything like that without either putting their life in jeopardy or having a car rider take them over there. They can't do it. It's impossible. It's not that it's too far. They just can't do it. And we've been, we've been doing all this stuff with pedestrian planning, you know, all these different things. And the bottom line is we've got to, we've got to take in consideration the people who live in that part of the district, in that part of our town, to provide them access to the great things we have in downtown Smithfield and the community park. Because they can get on this trail, go down to the river, to the, walk, to the, to the other walkway, and take it up there to the community park. They could do that. Could ride the bicycles. They could do that. They still got to get over across that street. I know it's dangerous, but at least they won't have to worry about having a fight with somebody on 70 Highway trying to go 55 into 20 in the 35 speed zone now. So it's something that we, if we 
We have to provide equal opportunities for people to have access to our amenities. And we have not been doing that. This is a way, a step in that direction. It puts us a long way towards it. We're not even there with this, but we're very close. And we made a good concerted effort to provide those opportunities for the future. Maybe not in our lifetime, by the way. I don't know. Look how long we've got here to get here. But at least we're making progress to making our town complete and not segmented like we were before. Uh, we know there's going to be more building on 70 and there'll be more sidewalks on 70. So that may actually get connected before Wilson Mills gets connected, to be quite honest with you. And that's okay, too, because they can walk down the street and get on 70 that way. So there is that possibility. But, um, and we know eventually Wilson Mills is going to be a corridor for Interstate 42. We know that because they've been building the off ramps over there forever. So we know that road's going to have to have more work done as a, as a main entrance point into Smithfield. So, you know, I mean, DOT may help us on Wilson Mills Road, to your point, maybe one day. And uh, we've talked with them about it one time. They said $6 million. And because they want three-lane roads, and we don't want to do that. But <coughs> the point is, this is a way we can connect Smithfield with the rest of West Smithfield, with the rest of the Smithfield that we need to do, at least provide an opportunity for our people to be able to get to town. And, uh, and be able to enjoy those things like everybody else does. So I think it's a fair, uh, it's costly, everything is costly. Everything costs money. But the taxpayers in West Smithfield pay their taxes too. And they have very little amenities to show for it. We have a park that's not ours. We have a soccer park out there we haven't developed yet. That's not in our, that's not in West Smithfield, that's over in, that's on 210. That's West Smithfield. People can't get there from our neighborhood. <laughs> it's West Smithfield. Point is, they can't get there from there. And we don't have it developed. There's nothing there yet. It's a dirt field. <laughs> uh, point is, we don't have any amenities in West Smithfield. There's none. The McDonald's. We have nothing that belongs to the town of Smithfield. We borrow land to build George Johnson Park. It's not even ours. So uh, we do own that strip of land we bought over there that's not been developed. I'm not sure what we can do with it, but we do own it. So... But it's we got a drum part. We do that we don't own. That we also we also <laughs> lease. <laughs> so that's all I say. We do have a fire station. Uh, so there's something for us there. But I'm just saying it's time to spend some money in District Four over in the West Smithfield, Old West Smithfield area. And uh, this is the one of the ways we can start connecting our town. I think Councilman Wood made a good or excuse me, Councilman. Dunn made a good point. Sorry, I had to think about it a minute. Um, the money is allocated. The total project concept, we don't know, what, but I think there should be a starting point and get as far as we can. But if we need to make that known, is that what we're agreeing on? If not, this could turn into a $5 million project to get from point A to point B that's outlined on that map. Yep. So and which side are you going to start on? And if necessary, can you go to six foot pass or eight foot pass? That saves money. Yeah. <laughs> I'm saying. I think that's part of the grant is that you have to have a multi-use path. It's a um, eight foot wide, primarily because of the congestion and mitigation part of the grant uh, <coughs> we're trying to cut down on carbon monoxide so i mean we're, that's how we sold this thing is that we're going to bike on it we're going to walk on it and it's got to be big enough to handle those things but well let's also let's not overlook the fact that we're getting 1.875 million dollars that they're giving us mm -hmm. that we wouldn't have to come up we would have to come up with if we're trying to connect west smithfield without it so free money Money. Somebody got There's no such thing. There's no such I make a motion that we uh, accept the uh, that we uh, uh, approve this uh, agreement. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? No. Two opposed. Two opposed. Who was Thank two? you. Uh, Councilman Lee and Councilman Scott Never opposed. Councilman Scott. No. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Good job.
All right, let's see. Move on now to council members. Is that all? I think. I think we covered everything. All right. All right, move on now to council members' comments. Anyone speak? Anybody? Mr. Manager, turn it over to you, sir. Thank you. I don't have a lot. I um, want to wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving coming up and a happy holiday season um, in December. Uh, in that light, we have some uh, things going on. Uh, we have the annual Grinch Run on December 2nd at Community Park. The price of entry there is uh, bring an unwrapped uh, toy um, that we'll uh, donate. Uh, and feel free to dress up like your favorite Grinch character and have fun with it. Uh, we have downtown tree lighting scheduled for December 7th. Um, the uh, event will start at 6. The actual tree lighting is at 7. So come down. Uh, great project that uh, DSDC is involved with as well as the town. We then have our Christmas parade one week later on the 14th at 7 o'clock. Uh, hopefully the weather will be good. Um, town hall will be open, uh, so restroom facilities will be available. Uh, we'll have cookies and uh, hot chocolate like we usually do here, so uh, please come by and, and stop in for that. Um, there's, I, I'll, I'll mention this. I've had some questions about the town hall sign being dark out here. It's been dark for a while, about three weeks. We're having a hard time getting someone in here to evaluate exactly what needs to be done with it. Um, we know that there's a power source problem. Um, we've had electricians look at it. <clears throat> We're going to have a sign company look at it later this week, and we'll hope we'll get some, get some answers and get that back operational before the holiday season. I already mentioned that uh, Andrew Harris joined us. Um, Appreciate his sticking with us tonight, and uh, that's all I have. Mr. Scott, is that sign, is a warranty you, gone on that? It is. It's out of warranty. When you say power problem, like some internal component in the equipment? They, 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 they don't do that. We had McClung's come. They, find, they, they were able to show up after a while. We waited quite a while for them. But, but they, they seem to think that there's not enough electricity going to the sign to operate it properly. Well, it worked for a while, I guess. So we're, we're trying to figure out. They, they seem to think that maybe it needs to be 220 when it's only been 110 all this time. Oh, my God. So it's like, it's been, but it's been working. So we're, we want to have someone who yeah. specializes in the sign take a look at it. All right. Well, they could certainly tell that. I mean, they're electricians, and yep. the data would be on the equipment. I think. Yep. It should be. Yep. All right. All right. Uh, I'll make a motion we go into closed session pursuant to North Carolina General Statute 143-318-11A3 to consult with town attorney. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Go into closed session. It's time. We will go into the conference room.